How's it going, folks? So, uh, physical media sucks sometimes, you know? Just, poof, fuck me. It's, I hate buying it. It's just like... Ugh. Plastic. Cardboard. A never-ending obsession. Movie Warners. We made you wait. And then we made you wait some more, and then we made you wait a little bit more. Almost a full year later, we're finally coming out with Movie Hoarders number two, Bat 32 and the Goat. We are rolling. We did. Oops, we did it again. We recorded for an hour without recording anything. Our intros. Remember the EC intros that were like three hours long before you got to the actual episode? Remember those, BB? <laughs> people probably hated that. Or maybe they yeah. like. I don't know. Some people were like, "I love it. Keep well, doing I think- that." I think the podcast audience now is different than back then. That's probably why, why we're losing popularity now on this mm. show. And I know we talk about a lot of po- people are probably like, fuck it. Like the, the hardcore listeners are like, we don't care about everybody who dropped off. We're still listening. But it's just funny that the more we devolve into our old and old uh, EC ways, Hillbilly DVD review ways, like the more like we just lose everybody. Well, like I don't get it because like isn't – don't people like – I remember people would be like, I'd listen. I'd basically listen to that in my work week. So yeah. like, I would like go and listen to it at work when I had like time, and then like they, you know, some people might only have like an hour, so they'd work their way. And then like, as far as EC goes, like it, we were doing like I think sometimes at our peak, like when I first started, we'd do two or three episodes a month. But then it got down to like one episode a month. Okay, maybe not even one episode, you know. And then when I had Dale come on. You know, we were trying to stay steady, and then it was hit or miss, and then, you know, I don't know. It's the same thing with here. You're like, oh, I thought I lost all my listeners, and I'm like, I mean, two months isn't nothing. Like, yeah. especially if you if you anticipate on do, getting back into it, you're just taking a break. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, I've had breaks, too. Like, we've been going for over five years, seven years, wherever it's been here, and it's like, I've had breaks that were, like, seven months long before. Right. And then, like, as soon as I come back and I start, like, doing more shows, like, on a regular, as long as I come back consistent it actually builds up bigger than what it was before. So you never know. Like people float in and out of the podcast listening space. You know what I mean? True. And I mean, everything is going to like, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of shocked. Cause like, I don't, you know what, when I brought EC back, we were doing like the YouTube thing. It was still an audio thing, but like everybody was like, Oh, you got to do a video. And I'm like, why? Who wants to see us? I mean, even if we sit there and dress our best and we get haircuts and shit, who wants to see? I mean, who wants to? Like, I just don't like jump to that place, Bat. Like, I mean, like, I know what I look like. I know what you like. We're just like the normal fucking guys you would see walking right. around a shopping mall somewhere. You know, like, like when you walk through a Walmart to get groceries and you're walking by different people do you want to be like oh i want to fucking if they got something to say i need to be seeing them saying it's like we're just sitting at a fucking desk or in a bedroom like say right. i don't get that shit of being on camera being on like camera. i gotta hang my posters in the background yeah. and like, oh, that, like a red a red well i don't blame them like that turns me like, off cool. the posters in the background the funko and pops change, in the background. Like, oh god dude yeah and then i'm like well the then i gotta set. like i gotta change the posters out periodically and like i gotta have like a red it's gonna be like Dario Argento's Suspiria. Yeah, I gotta have like the dude, red light it's... in the background. I mean, honestly, that's why, like, you know, like I got out of YouTube for all that shit for those reasons. But like, at least when I did do YouTube, I tried to do it right, like in a garage, whenever possible. That's all you fucking need is like you need you need to be filming. You don't need to be filming in the comfort of your fucking fake little set that you made in your house of all your collectibles and shit. That makes you look like a fucking nerd. You need to be the fucking guy like in front of a concrete wall or in front of a sweaty <laughs> hog. Like you need to be like the one person because that's how everybody got in the hillbilly DVDs. I actually liked it like our small but loyal gr- group of uh watchers is like we got they got into us because we were doing the shit nobody else was doing you know what i mean Go, goats like i gotta track down a, a greasy ass coney island and and have yeah. all the background people chatter and the noise and yeah. stuff and 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 eating my coney dog or Fuck yeah. euro or whatever yeah. dirty shit stained uh those arcades <laughs> where the front is open to the weather and it just gets all dirty and fucking oh funny. yeah yeah fucking that's what we need all right movie hoarders let's let's get to what movie hoarders is i got piles of shit here and you know some of this i think i actually might have covered on the first movie hoarders a year ago because i just kept everything in a pile i ran out of shelf space you still haven't watched it so i haven't watched a lot of shit man sickness i know yeah, it is sickness. sickness granted i'm i'm now on that level now I, I don't know. We should be throwing out monthly prices, but now I'm Do like, it. Who I, cares? this past summer, 
Yeah, when well, you were talking, you were like, yeah, I was. I had to slow down because I was spending like five hundred dollars a month, and I'm like, I'm yeah. There, when we baby. did the first movie I'm hoarders, I was up to like there was one month, baby. I went, I went like seven hundred bucks that month. Well, kind of my issue is that I've been buying like I'm like I'm after the out of print stuff, and then yeah. and then Bat Bat decided he was gonna get he's gonna get wild with buying like shit that on DVD. Like and you, I know you'd be like, why are you buying DVD? But like some of this stuff ain't you know it's never gonna come out. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you, if you th- I, I like, I broke down and bought some DVDs in the last year, like uh, some of the movies I wanted to cover for the show specifically, and then like I was buying these, they were sealed, but they weren't new, these like 15 year old, 20 year old mm-hmm. fucking DVDs people have in a pile that they sell on eBay, and I'm sitting there paying 12 bucks for these things, and I'm like, I'm getting fucking butt fucked on this. See, I was uh, I, I've been doing imports and stuff, but I'm sure we'll we'll get into that. Yeah. But yeah, now I'm I'm I'm, and then not to mention I'm yeah I'm mean, like hitting up all these sales and. You know, I think the biggest sale, I don't know where you want to start, but the, I mean, uh, you got a bunch of Kino. We've had. Oh, I got four boxes of Kino I, here. I don't I know think, we're going to I think to. since the last time we did a episode, I think we there's been like, what, four or five sales. Yeah, and, and, and we, and I think you and me bought in almost every sale. Pretty much, but like I was getting, because like their last two sales were like pretty much identical. I thought they were yeah, at least, they except. Were similar. Um, now they've gotten. Now they've taken on. Uh, they're distributing for Raro Video. I don't know if you grabbed any of those. Uh, Hitchhike was one, but I actually ended up getting it get on Hitchhike. Amazon. Yeah, and I should have got it on Kino because I would have got the slipcover. Let's <laughs> I mean, let, like let's matters, let's talk about but... that for a second, B, because I've ordered some movies recently from Amazon, and I, I won't even go into the stories, but I've had disastrous results. But um, Amazon's really weird with shipping and pretending like they ship shit when they don't, and then it never gets shipped Ooh, out. But yeah. Uh, yeah, like I've, I've had the, two fake experiences. fake the damn tracking, too, as well. Yeah, yeah, they then... fake the tracking on me. Yep. It, it, yeah. It's weird. Yeah. I just, I, I don't even want to go into it, but, uh, like, do you think, I mean, I, I guess maybe factor that into what we're talking about right now, and people who know who know and people who don't don't, but the, do you think that uh, there's something soulless or wrong with buying movies from Amazon as opposed to buying from, like, Kino Lorber or eBay or whatever? I, well, I, I think I think I, Amazon should not be your first place to look, honestly. Well, when it comes to Kino, like Kino is going to be like the cheapest always. Mm-hmm. That before, I mean, you can go ahead and compare yeah. to Amazon. And so, when it comes to Kino Lorber titles, um, it is going to be cheaper. Uh, the thing about if you're like a, a fanatic on the slipcover thing is that I've noticed that their uh, Kino Lorber's um, slipcovers. Like a lot of boutiques don't uh, pa- don't plastic the the uh, over top of the, s- the slipcase, yeah. and Kino Lorber does. Yeah. So you're Your probably corners. going to get you're probably going if it's a Kino Lorber title and you order it through Amazon. If you're like a fanatic and got to have that cardboard in your cardboard cut, uh, it's going to be there. Nine times out of ten, it's going to be there. Um, you know, but like again, you look at their prices and, and you. Really, because Kino has so many fucking sales. If you just compare, even I think that they're even like when they're not running a sale, I think they're cheap. I think Kino is actually cheaper than. Well, I take that back because I had the uh, Death Wish 4K in my cart, and I still hadn't got that because it's always. I did get it in that sale when it was like eighteen dollars or whatever. Because I'm like, I've Amazon's not going to lower the price, and the only time Kino is willing to lower the price on this damn thing is during a sale. And I think that was the first time that it actually went down to eighteen dollars. I think it was like twenty five or. $28 $28 or it was something. It always 27.99 before. Yeah, yeah 27.99 and I never seen them put it that was the first the last sale was the first time they put it in a sale so yeah. I just jumped on it because Well, I kind of do that know. thing on Keenan Lorber sales too big when there's like one where it's like I wish this was a drop. I wish this was a drop. <laughs> if I'm ordering like 3 or 4 or 5 however big the order is, like if I'm ordering a bunch of other ones that are dirt cheap, I'm like okay, like I'll just splurge on this one. Like I won't buy 5 of them that are still 18 bucks, but I'll splurge and buy one of them but for the longest right. time when they would do the sales bb like this was back when they didn't have many 4k titles they only had probably like about 20 4k titles back then but they used to drop them all down to like 14 bucks and like they don't really do that anymore they're not gonna yeah that's how i think i got but they didn't have the slip covers that's how i got um just looking at my shelf i've got fistful of dollars and the good and the bad and the ugly yeah. And they didn't have slip covers, uh, but yeah, I think I got those. That's the last time I seen a 4K. And the only reason I got those was actually it was it was funny because um, 
it was only like three or four dollars more for the 4k yeah than it was for the blu-ray and i was just like this already comes with the blu-ray i was like what am i what am i stupid here like then that's my whole thing and um why i pulled the trigger the last sale for death wish was because um, we should cover I, those Eastwood ones, though, baby, because I picked those. I actually got the majority of those off Amazon. Well, they those put a Kino ton. 4Ks, yeah. they, they put a ton of Kino Lorber out. Uh, uh, Kino Lorber put a ton of these spaghetti westerns and yeah. Eastwood ones. Um, didn't they just put out the Outlaw Josie Wales? Or yeah. they just put one out that just recently. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Outlaw Josie Wales in 4K. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, man, like you know, like as far as the death wish situation, I don't know if you ever had. I never had the Blu-ray. I've always had a DVD of it. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a I copy have a of it at all, and I have all the other ones <laughs> except for five, which is finally. Yeah, I got out, that but... Bronson triple pack, and yeah. I don't even give a fuck about part five. Like I know yeah. they just put it out. Kino Lorber put four and five out on. Uh, was yeah. it four K? No, I, well, I don't, I don't know about four, but I know five is just a Blu-ray. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, I already had that, like, yeah, um, the triple MGM pack. Yeah. Little triple pack. I'm satisfied, even though three is really good, and I'm, I don't know. I don't know that I, it looks really good. This The, the MGM three pack looks really good. Like, it three looks yeah. good on I it. have the um, MGM three pack of the Robocop movies, too, and, like, I mean, I did eventually get the Arrow 4K, but that was more to just get the steel look of the first Robocop, but, like, everybody was like, oh the 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 screen factory versions of robocop 2 and 3 you gotta get them i'm like dude i got this triple pack and these fucking mgm transfers are good for those two movies like i'm not right i'm not upgrading shit to get a scratchy look fucking... like i liked three and stuff when it came out but yeah. i was like a kid you know i was pretty yeah, young same here. Time, i mean i was a bit was older and like, I, like kids yeah like, but then like, i got such shitty reviews yeah like, people, remember like, how i still liked it though because i remember the yeah. trailer showed the scene of him in the car where he clips that gun onto his hand and shit i like that like no i i i i think it's fun i haven't seen it probably since like the early 2000s on you know, like you maybe know what? on satellite I, I or think, something i think it's been I, a while. I could be wrong but i think i did a fucking commentary for that for hillbilly dvd reviews oh did you okay. robocop 3 yeah. yeah i mean i wouldn't mind redoing them in order like robocop 1 2 3 like i've totally be down. i don't even have them baby and i yeah. definitely didn't it was right around that whole thing with arrow and the robocop hdr and you had the whole deal with dune and you were like fuck that i know i i, I, I waited till i got it like dirt fucking cheap oh i was I, gonna say the standard is like nothing for that uh yeah. arrow hdr like yeah. but and, and there was no problems with it i take it or i don't think so i don't think okay. i watched it all the way through though i think i skipped around on the disc to be yeah, honest. the last I remember the Blu-ray when they spliced in the scenes and they were like yeah. really shitty looking, and that yeah. was the last. That's actually the last time I've seen RoboCop. Was that I have Blu-ray, the OG so. Blu-ray of RoboCop, and then I have that triple pack which has the remaster of the first one in it. Yeah, I, I know that they went back and fixed all that. Triple pack, it is uncut, good, though. and they fixed the yeah. scene right, the scene, the insert scenes. Yeah, yeah, but I just I don't know. I mean, I, I, I guess, I mean, obviously, other than just seeing in the theater as a kid, like, my first copy of RoboCop I owned was the Criterion DVD. It was one of the first ones, uh, first DVDs I ever bought. Oh, Criterion did it. Okay. I, yeah. the, the, I, I don't, I think I got a studio And that DVD was, that was or, back, baby, yeah. when Criterion didn't give a fuck. Their, their DVD transfers were garbage. They used Grindhouse prints for some of, like, the, the John Woo Hong Kong shit that oh, I Oh, you remember the, remember the Salo, the whole Salo? Yeah. I mean, oh, and I God. ended up getting... I don't know if it was a bootleg. I I hate to go. I think I thought we talked about that stuff, but yeah, that was like one of their biggest, most infamous titles, uh, and it was like boot bootlegged, and it would go for. And I, I don't well, know, do you remember it? back when Suncoast would sell used movies? Cucks would go wild when they would find a used copy of Salo for like forty bucks at oh, Suncoast. I got it at Fye for yeah. like I think I got it for like eight bucks, yeah. and it looked pretty legit. But then I was on like the criteria on like this website that was there like was a lot of criteria showed you the difference. Back then. And the weird thing was, was this is what I think. Like, they went and they, like, the actual, like, uh, sleeve mm -hmm. was actually legit, but yeah. something must have happened to the disc. But then the bootlegger was so, but I don't even get it, how it ended up in the FYE for, like, next to nothing, and they didn't know what the fuck was going on with it. And they went and they must have went to a professional company to have the discs, like, pressed, but it was, like, the color was a little bit off. Yeah, it might have been a legit disc though. It looked but, um, pretty much everything looked legit on it. But, and you, I got but it you know at, what, BB? Like in America, bootleggers of DVDs it was like they would just burn it in their house on a fucking blank yeah. disc and shit. 
I used to buy movies. It didn't look like that. The yeah, back like of when it I first didn't moved, look like a burn disc. When or, I, yeah, yeah, when I first moved to LA, I would buy movies off eBay, and then what I would get in the mail, I could tell it was bootleg, but they were like factory disc. Like that happened with the Aviator in that uh, Adrian Brody movie, The Jacket. And like I looked at them, and it's just like it would be like, oh, it's like an import, whatever. And then, like, I look at it, I was like, I can tell from the sleeve this is a fucking bootleg, but the disc was not, like, and, like, the only, the jacket was, like, perfectly fine DVD quality, and the aviator was, like, really good looking, except one scene, it pixelated up, just, like, whatever their bootleg transfers, because I think what they would do is they would, like, copy the movie from a DVD 9 gig and then fit it down to DVD 5 to, like, you know, but, like, yeah, like, there, I mean, because, like, copyright really doesn't, for movies, copyright really isn't a force outside of America. Like, just the DVD plants back then overseas would be making shit. Somebody would place an order, like, people, they, they wouldn't give a shit. Get that shit manufactured in Spain, and, like, I mean, I well, got some... Well, that's what we've seen with Trick or Treat for, yeah. like, the longest time, too. Yeah. Like, that, now, finally, um, uh, Synapse and um, Michael Felcher uh, announced that, I thought it was gonna come out for October, but apparently they ain't on the ball, like yeah you think you think so what do we gotta wait till next halloween now i don't you know it sounded yeah, like they were gonna like have they, it ready, they can but... they can spend three years and get that right the way they usually do spend three years and get that right well like, please get got, the soundtrack I... right because the because the shitty soundtrack that was the only problem with the foreign release the transfer was beautiful yeah uh, it was uh, you know apart from being a little bit dark i guess mm. uh not super dark but it's like a little on the darker side not you know not distracting but yeah that soundtrack is is ass like the audio is i mean ass so i've, I've actually heard worse things on screen no, factory yeah. disc like the john carpenter's body bags actually has like actual like pr like problems with the soundtrack and they just put it well, on the that's disc and john say, carpenter's it. body bags i yeah. don't think anybody but i mean the trick or treat like what you're talking about is just the sound quality it sounds like they took yeah. the fucking sound off a of vhs tape that's what it, it does like it's pretty it's it's like real low like you like crank. it won't damage your speakers you the way body bags will but <laughs> no it, it, it's probably impossible for the trick-or-treat soundtrack to damage your speakers because yeah. like you got to crank it up to like yeah. 50 to 60 percent uh just to hear the damn movie apparently it's like real low and i don't know it sounds it sounds like it's mono and then they split it into stereo well, the, the, that's the, exactly that's, that's why you like. have to be a pro like the goat, BB. You, you get your Pioneer Elite receiver. You got the the different virtual sound listening modes. You sit there and you hit that button. You play the movie for about ten minutes. You hit that button. You try out all the modes to find the one that works the best. Uh, oh, you I, digitally uh, split it up and have your yes. have your receiver yeah. do the work for you. Yeah. If if, if you have a, a, a and then updated... you got Fastway blasting through your speakers yes. like you're at the movie theater. Yes. Baby. Like, dude, all yeah. these two point out. There's a few now. There's a few that are fucked up. Like, there's a few DVDs. Like, uh, the the really weird one is uh, my boy Andrew McCarthy, Fresh Horses. That's, like, a DVD, and it's a 2.0, but it doesn't, like, split out right. So when I watch that movie, I have to go into the, 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 the whatever receiver, and I have to actually turn off my back speakers, and I have to only run the top three because – because there's there's some soundtracks that like they don't split out the right way no matter what you do it's like how it's baked into the soundtrack where like the dialogue will be coming out of the surround speakers and you don't want that because like, you're watching the movie and you feel like the people's voices are floating around the room so like sometimes right. you have to like remix that shit down forcefully to just basically stare at you. <laughs> well it's great though that the modern uh setups can do like yeah dude can actually do that and have that technology in it and stuff like yeah. that so i know i want to get um I, I need to get like a like a brand new. I've got like a 1980. Well, because you know I listen to music. Yeah. I listen to my vinyl and stuff primarily. I don't even have a sound bar or anything. But really, I listen to the shit. I watch movies at night. So like, really, I got to put it like when I get home from from working and stuff. Like I, you know, people are sleeping and stuff. So yeah. I've got to like I turn it down to like five. And then I put the subtitles, you know, I put the subtitles on so that I can, you know. Be Before I forget quiet. this, because uh, I did this recently when I watched the Arrow release this past week, the initiation, which I think was only like 1.0 mono. Like this is the pro tip from the goat. If you get, if you got a top of the line, and I know they're all different and shit, but like I have a pioneer. If you have the, um, if you have a movie, especially a horror movie that are like horror movies are mostly music and dialogue based. So I would go. If you have a 1.0 or a 2.0 uh, soundtrack on your Blu-ray or 4K or whatever you're playing off of, uh, go onto the setting that's DTS, Neural X, 
drama. And what what the drama setting is going to do is it's going to pull because a lot of the, a lot of the dialogue wasn't really mixed right in these movies. So that that drama setting, it's it's going to, it's going to grab your your um, your dialogue and it's going to keep it in your center channel, which is where you want it. That's the whole point of the center channel. That's where all the dialogue supposed to come from. And then it's going to take your music cues and your sound effects and it's going to put them in your front and back surrounds. And it's it's just like having real surround sound, BB. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm amazed when they can do it on a... I mean, a stereo, okay, stereo is a little easier. It's two-channel already. You can move it around. But when they can do it on a 1.0 mono, it's pretty fucking awesome. Is that what you do with a lot? Well, I mean, I'm sure a lot of your DVDs actually have a proper soundtrack, but some of the ones that don't, is all that what you do? Baby, all these new ones, I have... Like, like, uh, and there was a while, too, where the, there's little shitty boutiques like Echo Bridge and shit where putting all these movies out fast yeah. and cheap. They're all putting them out in 2.0. Like, like, put, like uh, modern movies that had surround sound leap, tracks, uh, yeah. I think the Quantum Leap series on the cheap, yeah. something like that. I think like, it's Echo a must. Bridge. Like I check my audio settings every time I watch anything older. I mean, actually, I, for everything I watch, just to make sure it's on, it's like on the right setting, you know, on the receiver, so it sounds the best. But like, yeah, especially with those older ones, like you, you gotta you gotta know your receiver. If you, anybody out there who got a receiver, know your uh, DSP sound mode so that you can make these older discs sound decent. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So what do you, so what do you want to get into? You want to you want to go? I mean, I know we've been actually I've been talking on my end, kind of some releases, actually new yeah. ones. I mean, they might not be brand new, but some stuff that I've acquired. So, what do you, what do you got, baby? Get some Kino right. Lorber. Well, I got a box of Kino. I want to just get what I got loose out here. It's like I can't remember if I <laughs> talked about this, but I got Play Nice to Tour L.A. It's the German release of the Edo Ross and Luis Roby from Friday Thirteenth movie or TV series. This was a what do you call it a um, like a cop drama, and like she got naked in it. So I had to import the DVD from Germany. Is these, is these those ones you said were bootlegs? But they're no, like this one isn't a bootleg. No, this is just the a Blair DVD. Witch too. I was gonna ask you. Oh how yeah, that yeah. Looked, the, the, how that pressing and everything looked. Yeah, it's it's really good. I'll I'll, I'll get into. It. I got that. It's on, packaged on. properly. Okay. Oh, it's it's beautiful, baby. The Spaniards, man, they really know how to give a great bootleg. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you could have got the you could have got the Martin disc. You could have got that. 1080 one that's been on ebay the spanish one yeah you didn't have to get the 4k but i think that was 20 bucks for i always bid on it while we're I, i've actually had that on my list on ebay for a long time but i was like it's gonna cost so much as much as the 4k so like i just might yeah. as well wait for the 4k so the, the, i got caught up this is from about six months ago i got caught up in the shout factory like oh we're only making 1500 copies i bought a couple movies for 30 bucks a pop that i, I are questionable Ooh. purchases bb First up, we got our boy Boyo, the evil that men do. I know Newt sprung for this release in the because it's got the extended footage on it, but I still haven't watched this after six months. The other one, I was just like, I was on my Abel Ferrara kick because you know I'm all about Abel Ferrara, baby. Um, Are you really? Yeah, oh, I didn't know the that. Driller oh, wow. Killer. I mean, obviously the classics yeah. like King of New York, uh, uh, Bad 45. Lieutenant. But I'm also down with the Driller Killer. I'm down with. Um, Miss Forty Five. You Miss better. Oh, yeah, I don't have a copy yeah. of Miss Forty Five, but I do like it. Yeah, because it's a hard, it's a hard one. I think you gotta, I think you gotta import that one, and yeah. it's probably a boot, like a, not like a boot. That's another thing. When it's an import and it may not be an official release, these motherfuckers track down like a thirty-five mil. That's what I think they did with Trick or Treat. They mm-hmm. they tracked down a thirty-five millimeter print that Rings. was nice and scanned it and. Yeah, and like I'm down with the New Rose Hotel. That's the one where. Uh, Ozzy Argento plays a hooker that uh, um, uh, Christopher Walken <laughs> and uh, Willem Dafoe are trying to train to like do some corporate espionage for them, and then Dafoe falls in love, and then she turns on them, and then he's like, you know those capsule hotels, baby. He he climbs into a capsule hotel. He's basically he, he climbs into like a like the ones in China. Yeah, well, yeah, I think I can't remember what country this was being the movie, but yeah, it's like China, Japan has them. He climbs into one of those, <laughs> and it's like it's a really small one. Like he's basically sit, like crouched in a barrel. And he cries and masturbates for like the whole second half of the movie in there as he like recollects and like has memories and shit. But uh, this one, the Shout Factory was like, we got the rarest Abel for our like you fuckers can't even get this because it came out in the early days of DVD and was like. But this is R Xmas with uh, Drea De Matteo, Lilo Brancato Jr., who's been to prison a bunch of times, and Ice T. 
Never it's, heard of that. Yeah, it's like basically about this couple that get caught up getting high on their own supply. Like they're trying to run the dope and all that shit, but they keep getting and it's and it's Christmas themed. I was like, oh, it's be so great to have this for next year when Christmas comes along. And like now I'm like, I don't know if I'll ever watch this fucking movie again. And then uh, it wasn't it wasn't good. It's pretty boring. Like the only f- good part yeah. is when Ice T shows up and he's like threatening to kill them and shit. But um. It's weird. Abel Ferreira's um, all of his content is always like around like that. That gal that's the uh, the star of Miss Forty Five had like a heroin addiction. It seems she like did. And she was the one that shot uh, Kaitel up with the heroin and uh, yeah. Bay yeah. Lieutenant, yeah, Zoe. Yeah, it's it's a uh, yeah Zoe, and it's, it's always like he's attracted to this like. I know. I, and I don't know if I don't know if he used heroin or had tasted stuff like. I oh yeah, he, he was a heroin addict for years. Uh, he admits it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, out of that shit. This is just a general release. Like I've been meaning to pick I've been trying to collect all the different versions of Invasion of Body Snatchers and this one was actually hard to find. Like it's not out of print, but just not a lot of people Is this carry. like the original? No, I, that's the only one I, I still don't have the 1950s one. I have the one from the 70s. I have the one that Abel yeah. Ferrara did from the 90s, speaking of Abel Ferrara. And then this one was like the early 2010s, The Invasion with Nicole Kidman, Daniel Craig. And it's actually a pretty good version of Invasion by Snatchers. Because in this one, like instead of turning the pods, they just vomit into people's uh, food and make them eat it. And that's how they turn into the aliens. So uh, Toby Hooper did The Invaders from Mars. That's like that's like another one, too, as well. That's so, a really I good one. I, like, I've been looking at yeah, so many wa- covers. Actually, uh, I watched Sven Gulli and he showed showed it and i hadn't watched it in a long time and i watched it on his show a few weekends back and i was just like i gotta get this on blu-ray not yeah. ju- not just to mention that you know i'm like a to- toby hooper fan i mean there's certain key toby hooper films like some of his latter day stuff toolbox murders is actually better than the original i really like it's yeah, a I different film but he is yeah. toolbox murders is really good uh, that's the only movie that um sherry moon zombie would has done that was not directed by her yeah. husband and you you know why is rob was like it's toby hooper you got to do this you, gotta blow. you got you got to that way you can invite me to the set so i can hang out with toby <laughs> yeah. and stuff like because i basically based my entire career off of this man's first you know first horror film pretty much i mean let's be real yeah and then i got a couple gifts here uh boo from the disney movie club she finally got me the 4k of shape of water and then also, like, I got this, like, brand new when it came out, Amsterdam, that movie with uh, Christian Bale and uh, Margot Robbie. I've never heard and, of it. Uh, David. Is it, it good? It, it's really good, and it, it was really hated when it came out. So, like, basically, it's, like, the 1940s, and it's, like, the guys, they come back, like, after war, and, like, they're fucked up, and they're trying to help veterans. And, like, they basically, it's, it's basically they uncover this big conspiracy of, like, the, it's basically about the commies like the real commies trying to take that were trying to take over the country in like the 30s and 40s and like they get a, they get a, like it's awesome our girl taylor swift who thank god taylor swift just beat out uh scorsese and i knew i didn't want to i didn't want to <laughs> be that on npr earlier yeah i didn't want to be like, negative sad, bb baby. you know when we recorded last week i didn't want to be negative but i knew that scorsese would not be number one of the box office the eras tour but what's great about Amsterdam, like literally the first scene of the movie is Taylor Swift. She knows about the conspiracy and she's trying to warn Christian Bale and his friend. And she's like crossing the street to like tell them like, I got like you guys, like, you know, you guys like, you know, everything, all the shit that's going on with the veterans. Because basically the movie's about like all the guys that get their eyes blown out and their hands chopped off in the war. And then the government fucked them when they came home. So she's trying to tell them and like. I think she has like half a line of dialogue, and the car comes and runs her over like nasty. She's like, "You're happy about that?" Yeah, huh? like it was fucking awesome. So yeah, and, and then they they meet up with De Niro, and he 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 like you know like basically he's this high ranking general, retired general, and like the shit he he says about the war and everything, and all the commies invading. Because basically, basically it's kind of like now with the, without getting too political, it's kind of like now. Uh, all the people they're trying to brainwash everybody and gaslight everybody it's like this kind of like what this movie was about and it's like they needed to band together to be like hey stop these communist fuckers from taking over the uh the, the country basically it's pretty good hey baby i gotta ask you a question though what's your hate for this killers of the flower moon like what do you, you you're not a scorsese fan like the man almost did a four-hour movie. I heard that it's like three hours and twenty-some minutes long. It's almost like three. It's like pretty much three and a half hours long. Okay, this is what I, I have. Mean, this is what I have about. It. I don't have anything against the movie. I want to see the movie. I wish I was in the theater yeah. right now watching the movie. But you know, yeah. 
I, I will be watching. I'm I'm 99.9 percent because I'm going on vacation here this week, and I'll I'll finally have the time to watch a four and a half hour Scorsese movie. But uh, we'll watch what? We're you're going to L. A. Right? You're yeah, gonna yeah. watch it in L. A. Yeah, huh? there's gonna yeah. be a, way more theaters down there playing it. But um, yeah. But my thing is, this is not this is not like um. This is not like oh my god, Scorsese's back. This was a movie that wasn't even supposed to play theaters. This is a movie that is only it's being released it's only in theaters. The, the the radio ads I've been hearing because yeah. I don't only watch much theaters. TV. Like, <sighs> only in theaters, and I'm like, For one what does week. that mean? And I'm like, oh, it means that you can't stream it too. Yeah, uh, because because it, it's an Apple movie theaters. made for Apple TV, and then they were like, oh, like let's put it in theaters. Like I don't know if Scorsese pressure more money. They'll make more money if you put on Apple. T- like it's a two hundred million dollar budget. If you put on Apple TV because streaming all operates at a loss, like you just lose two hundred million. So like they're just trying I to. I think it like... already made like twenty six million or whatever this past weekend. Like it wasn't. It didn't overdo. It didn't outdo Taylor Swift's second. No. What is it, second oh my god, week, the Eras but... tour, baby. The, have you seen the oh, Eras yeah. tour? Like, the, have you seen in the theaters how not sold out they are? It's amazing. All the empty oh, seats yeah, and baby. the space that you can get for the Eras tour. And the best part is the tickets are nineteen dollars and eighty nine cents because that's a very special number for Taylor Swift nineteen eighty nine. I heard a lot of I heard a lot of women that are going to see it that already went to the concert and now they gotta like yeah. watch the concert in the cinema. Yeah, they're like, like you paid it's... two grand to see the concert live, now pay twenty <laughs> bucks to see it on a fucking video. Right. <laughs> but no, it's just it, it's not a real release of a movie, bad. It's 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 a release to advertise it being on Apple TV for Christmas. That's all it fucking is. Like it was never supposed to be in theaters. Well, like, who cares? I mean, it yeah, just, I Scorsese who belongs, and it's good that it's doing it. I think, I think really what it was was that theaters were like, we don't really have anything. Yep, we theaters need, are we need you to get this out to save us. But you know, both, like... both Apple and Amazon said that before all this strike <laughs> shit happened, they said we're committing a billion dollars worth of production to put movies back in theaters because Disney said we're pretty much exiting the movie theater space. Like they were making half the amount of movies, and then Sony and Universal cut back too. And honestly, I don't blame them because movie theaters are dead now. Like even when like any halfway decent movie comes out, like it basically opens to the like half the box office it would have like five years ago. People just gave up on going to the theater. So enjoy the last Martin Scorsese movie you'll ever see in a well, theater. He's been up like, there in age too. I mean, the man can oh, yeah. fucking drop over and blow his last breath. I mean, never, heaven forbid. I see, I seen some interview where he was like, he wishes that he, and, and it is just like, iron. it's kind of, there's some irony in it a little bit, but he is like, he wishes that he had more time with like the technology and what everyone's doing with film so he could make more because he sees what you know mm-hmm. everyone's doing now and it's like baby if you weren't there you these motherfuckers wouldn't even be doing anything because like you paved the way like you ask yeah. most of these motherfuckers and they're like yeah I saw a taxi driver like you know yeah. like I was inspired I mean by Joker it, I was it was street, a so. direct adaptation of Scorsese right movie. exactly and it's just like I don't you know if you if you hadn't been there and you'd came later like it wouldn't it, we, who knows we we may very well not have had that late 60s early 70s like uh film revolution and stuff yeah. without i mean he was an integral part and um but but, so. but let's let, let's not pretend though at the same and that's kind of like what i think is ridiculous about the new movie is let's not pretend that cucks have not left marty way behind <laughs> the last oh, yeah, the last movie he... but they're not film, they're not actually like i don't believe that those people all those him the marvel and the the fucking yeah. you know all that blah 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 you if you know you know what the fuck's been going on but like honestly straight up i don't think any of those people like were appreciated him as a auteur or whatever no. anyway to begin with like and i i would i highly doubt any of them have seen like his earlier stuff like mean streets or um yeah. Uh, Boxcar Bertha, which is not my favorite movie. Baby, I, got the, I got the DVD of Who's That Knocking at My Door. I mean, that's how. Oh my deep. God! Yeah, yeah, I mean, like you know, or um, my I need I need to get. I guess it's on a Blu-ray or whatever. I need to get it. Is Alice doesn't live here anymore? I mean, it's totally not. Well, I mean, it's more along the lines of what he's doing these days. Yeah. But it wasn't like what he was doing. Like you know, everyone was like, oh, he does the mob movies. You know, he does you know yeah. these crime films and stuff. But no, After Hours is not his typical film. No, oh, After Hours. I, I mean, is great, baby. I don't. I don't think that's his typical film. I don't think that this. This. I don't know. I watched the trailer for the. You know, Killers of the Flower Moon. I don't think this is his typical. No. I mean, he does. Do I think biopics, it looks. I gotta but... say though, I think the movie looks awesome. I just. 
I mean, yeah. I, I always I'm, knew. I'm uh, enthusiastic yeah. about seeing it. I mean, it's the best big budget movie I've seen that I'm like, and you know, I just, I didn't realize it was three and a half hours. So yeah. I don't, you know, I don't know if I'll have time to sit down and like, you're, you know, cause you're I not taking Monday a vacation Friday. in LA this week. So you don't have the luxury to see it during its one week theatrical run before it's fucking gone. Oh, it's not. That's it. Well, they got it planned. They got it planned. BB, it's going to be so wiped out. I mean, it, it, it's it's not like a limited thing. It's just if it does box office, but it didn't do any box office. So you know, you know, a week and a half your time is limited. By the t- by the time I get back from vacation and probably post this episode around November eighth or so, like that, I guarantee you, most theaters will have dumped. I wonder it already. if the the problem is is that, like I don't know. I might be able to try to like I don't know. Like that's a little town that I do. Uh, I like do some work in or whatever over there because it's like. A a half hour drive back to like yeah. where i live from where i work where i've been doing work and stuff but they have a little hole in the wall theater but it's only like a three screen and like mm. you know i don't they might have it if they have it then i can just shoot right over there right after and yeah. i could even get out at 7 30 but usually i'm like five five to eight like i might be able to go see it tomorrow mm. if they're playing and i should look if i didn't know it was going to be like you you, you really i don't know man look locally if if everyone's going out to see that, like these theaters are not chain theaters around right. here. They're like locally owned, but they are big multiplexes. Yeah. Well, what the one in my hometown is, and if it's doing well, the owners would be like, "Yeah, we're gonna keep running it." <laughs> like, it's yeah. I mean, if it's if it's doing, know? it's gonna do that slow business too because it's so long there. You can't you can only fit so many screenings in a day, and then like also too like it's gonna be right because it's so long. It's gonna be an older like a lot of older crowds will go see a movie in the in the second and third week. Like whenever I go see movies, well, that because they want to see De Niro, and yeah. you know a lot of older folks are gonna want to see De Niro. They're like, De Niro's on a new movie. We gotta, you know. I said it the other day. If Jack came out of retirement, a yeah. lot of people would come out and watch the movie, yeah. even if he was only in it for like 10, 15 minutes. Cause it's yeah, like the part of it. Yeah. He got a good check for two weeks worth. Yeah. Yeah, I saw him. He was like in Europe a couple of years ago or something or somewhere, and they were like, oh, oh Jack, are you are you going to do any – are you working on any new projects? He's like, no, I'm retired. But he looked – literally it felt – it seemed like the – it might have been a year and a half ago. And the motherfucker still smokes cigarettes, by the way. Yeah, did you <laughs> he, did you hear the re- report of like he lives in shambles? Like he has like this old rotting was furniture. Bullshit. Was he, it? Dude, he just like woke up from a nap and yeah. like came out onto his porch and the paparazzi's like hiding down in the bush yeah. and his hair's all messed up. And it looks like he just woke up from a nap and he was out there like yeah. smoking a cigarette or maybe he's smoking a joint or something yeah. i, I think he's smoking a joint actually leave him alone yeah. yeah he had his shades on and shit is you know like he always is rocking his hair was all messed up yeah he was like not nah. yeah because he was like out on a but porch. They, they said he his, didn't know his house is wrecked though his... from all his smoking but i mean i don't know uh okay yeah it's probably covered in nicotine stains because yeah. he's probably smokes two packs he don't a give day. a fuck yeah he probably smokes two packs a day right exactly like he worked his ass off to yeah. be able to smoke cigarettes in his fucking house who gives a fuck Who let the a... man fucking smoke and not to mention obviously it ain't taking him it ain't taking him down a notch because like he's still alive so it, it, to everyone that says smoking cause you know will kill you faster than a bullet <laughs> jack's still alive yeah. <laughs> I know, I'm, sure I know. I'm sure he smokes two packs a day too like you know because he comes from that era of two to four packs a day do you think he still calls the hookers like he used to who knows? He didn't even. He could probably just go out and and have his chauffeur take him around and go yeah. out and pick a girl up off the street and she'll suck his dick just because he's yeah. fucking Jack Nicholson, like, and a young one too. He could bring <laughs> could you, like a twenty one year old home. Could 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 you imagine if like a website like I like he's no, divorced? He doesn't have a wife or anything. Yeah. He's single as fuck. He don't have any kids in the house anymore. I mean, I'm sure his grandkids come over. Yeah, he probably like has. He probably has like set call like the quiet, you know, the high class call girls that are like a thousand dollars a fucking hour well there is that one and, he did the brain damage to that had a uh because he settled with her over the brain damage supposedly and uh he uh she, like her whatever her her hospital bills or her, her ongoing care bills were too much she had to take him back to court and get more money from him but like because she was slowly dying from the brain damage, supposedly. What did but, he? What did he do? I so, didn't hear about. So, that. Yeah, supposedly he pulled out a golf club and did some shit. And then I, I think the thing, <laughs> main thing where she hit her head, there was something about her going down some stairs. So I mean, 
it's it's not even like some fake shadowy like like when i heard about this like back whatever it was 10 years ago when she had to take him back to court like i was like is this real and like i looked it up and like you can find the news stories of him being in court and shit for it i mean obviously he wasn't in court his lawyers were and shit but right um but could you imagine if just a website came out of nowhere like we're not even like like damn man movie business is dead right now like ain't nobody doing it. all of a sudden here comes out fucking website 30 33 dollars a month fucking jack nicholson's bang limo can you imagine that he's just fucking riding around everyone was all excited because he hadn't been to a lakers game in a yeah. long time and uh he like what was it this past spring yeah. or whatever it was like actually right after the paparazzi was like look at him he's like he's crazy and this and that yeah. and i was just like he just looks like a 80 some year old enjoying well, he his always life goes, like, he always goes to the Laker game like. yeah with that Dude, old that's guy that's what I look like when I go out on the yeah. porch when I'm hanging out on my day off fucking my hair is all fucking a mess and I go out and smoke a cigarette and like I don't even put my sunglasses on, so he's not that out of it that he's well, like. Well, they they asked him too when he was coming out. They're like, Jack, why? Like the guys are all chasing Jack. How come you haven't been to the Laker game? You know, we everybody was worried that you're in poor health. He's like, Nah, I just don't like LeBron. And he's like, That's all it is oh. to it. Yeah. And he looked good too. He looked like he'd lost a little bit yeah. of weight because I know he had really gotten. I saw him like what was it before pre-pandemic when he was yeah. there and they were paparazzi was like look at the slob basically and then they caught a shot of him eating a hot yeah. dog and he was yeah, super he was fat and I was like oh god it, it, it's a it's a good thing that that I'm not famous because if if the fucking people saw the shit I was eating when I went to those baseball games this summer oh my god dude. But, like, like, the paparazzi is, like, brutal. They're like, look how fat he is. And it's like, yeah, he's old. What do you mean? What do you think's going to happen to you when you're 80-some years old? You think you're going to look like a spring chicken? Get fucking real. So, yeah, yeah, finishing off this little pile here. This is a movie I hemmed and hawed on Blu-ray forever. And I said, just fuck it. I just want a copy. Because everybody's like, there was an unrated VHS. And I'm waiting for the unrated. Maybe they'll bring out the unrated VHS. I was like, fuck it. I just finally want to see this movie again. One of my favorite movies of my childhood, dude, is... uh, uh, William Baldwin, Tom Berenger, and Sharon Stone and Sliver. I love that movie. Never seen it. It's like Sorry, the follow maybe. up to Basic Instinct, but it's actually kind of better than Basic. Yeah, it's kind of better than Basic okay. Instinct because there's no like murder. I mean, actually, I think there is maybe a murder that happens, but it's basically like she moves into this high rise apartment and like she starts like getting banged out by this good looking young guy played by Billy Baldwin. And it turns out he actually like owns the thing and he puts security cameras in everybody's thing. So like. He just watches everybody, and at first she's like, oh, you're such a pervert, because, you know, when I hooked up with you, we did all this kinky sex, and, like, now you're watching everybody, because, like, you're you're just a sex pervert, and he's like, he's like, nah, he's like, I just know all the secrets, and he shows her the video of, like, the, the dad who molests his daughter, and the, fucking all the other crazy shit that's going on, and it's just like, it's really, like, a good psychological drama. Speaking of... I'm curious, because this is a movie that was hated when it came out, and I love the shit out of it. But I got I picked up the 4K of this finally. Uh, it took a long time to come out in 4K, and then it did, and then everybody was like hating it. But have you ever seen the movie Malignant? Um, I've heard a bunch about yeah. it. I I didn't I wasn't really aware until everybody was like, well, Malignant, Malignant, and I'm like, oh, so I so I missed this one, and like I saw the cover art, and I really like the um the cover. It's art like Giallo stuff, inspired, but... yeah. Yeah, like uh. It, it reminds me of uh, the cover for Inside. Yeah. Uh, the French New Wave horror film. Um, yeah, so I was curious about it, but, like, I never heard any of you guys talk. Like, I don't, you know, but I don't know. I mean, I don't, like, I don't really talk to too many people much yeah. anymore online either. And, and honestly, the, the it's really hard so. to recommend new movies to people because every time I'm like, oh, I saw this new movie I really liked, and people are like, oh, that's shit, that's shit. Like, everybody just hates yeah, everything that's now. What, like, that's yeah. what I thought about Barbarian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like, oh, Barbarian's you put Barbarian cool. over and I mean, like, I, I did, this I did, is shit. I went to the theater to see Barbarian, and I didn't think it was, like, amazing or anything, but I'm like, oh, this is, like, a cool little, like, horror movie, and you're just like, oh, okay. yeah. Like, I'm, because well, you, well, you even got down with Bob Iger, and you're like, I'm glad Bob Iger's blocked in the blu-ray release i'm glad i, am, I actually yeah. am yeah i did see that say that recently yeah. although you can go on you can go on ebay and buy a bootleg and it's gonna be Ugh. hd quality so i mean it, it's but, on like um, five different streaming services why am i gonna like if they come out with the real blu-ray of it i'll buy it but why am i gonna buy a bootleg when i can watch it on fucking hulu or hbo max anytime i want to like you know what i mean right yeah, no, I haven't seen it. Uh, Malignant. Uh, I did see Barbarian. No, I, I, I guess we can get a little into Barbarian. Um, like the first half of the movie is all right, and then like 
it's real dark. Yeah. Uh, I gotta say, like, that's problematic for, like, the last half of the movie. And it just, like, reminds me of, of the Jack Ketchum offspring. And yeah. also, not that these are better films, but, like, I just feel like it's been done. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I don't, you know, I, I wasn't really I, I impressed think the hook of the, the movie twins. is Justin Long's character, don't you think? Yeah, no, that was the good stuff. If I mean, yeah, that's what I love or hate it. the guy. Yeah. I mean, his stuff was fun, and uh, yeah, when we get to whatever, you know, the ending, I don't really want to give it away too much. I, it's just no, yeah, yeah, don't give it away. It's like Malignant. That's why I didn't want to say too much. Is there's a pretty <laughs> wild twist that happens halfway through, and everybody just turns it off and goes back to watching TikTok when that twist happens. So, so it wasn't liked because I mean, I heard a bunch it was of stuff. Hated. Like a bunch of people liked the film, so. Oh, uh, I mean, I I just Malignant. I just heard it was shit from everybody. I'm just like, oh, I was but like, you J- like. But you yeah, liked it. Yeah, James Wan. And this one's rated R, too, so he's back, like, doing the gory shit. And that's what I really like. It really is a giallo. Like, I mean, without, you know, I'm not going to spoil, like, the story of what happens in the second half of the movie. But the first half of the movie, it's a black glove ca- oh, killer. Oh, so James Wan? Yeah. He's like he's like the M. Night Shyamalan now, too. Oh, I, don't like, think, I was just, like... just watching Insidious Chapter no, 2 last night. Like, he comes no. out with some good ideas. No, he's he's DC. He's definitely like M Night Shyamalan's. Like okay, yeah, it's, I could yeah, it's garbage. I'll put it but... this way: James Wan. I love James Wan, but like he's not one of my favorite directors all the time. He's one of my no. favorite directors who's uh, got a pulse and is young enough to still get up out of bed and go direct a movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think the thing is, is that like he got you know early on, he got like this big push, and then he had like really high expectations, just like Alexander yeah. Aja with a uh, hot tension well and he had then... to leave hollywood though james Wan, because uh, got... dead silence and death sentence flopped and they kicked him out that's why he had to go back right. to australia yeah well i mean yeah but he's still doing obviously malignant you no know? yeah like, no, he, he had a things. comeback he, the first insidious got him back and then he made the first conjuring and that did like huge money so that's what i mean he's at the top of the hollywood game now for sure right um Go ahead. I, I'm sure you have a, a large. Yeah, I gotta go now. through it. So the 4K, <laughs> I picked this up when I picked up the botched Night of the Comet 4K release. Thank you, Screen Factory, for that. And then I also you picked up. Just got the Blu-ray like I did, baby. I even just bought like. I mean, a I already, I already had the Blu-ray. I've had the Blu-ray well, for ten you years. Been the point was. And then yeah, I got the botched 4K that will not play in Panasonic players all the way through. And then uh, who knows? And you if... double dipped on it, baby, because it comes with the Blu-ray too. I quadruple dip. <laughs> I had the original. Well, baby, I, I had, had the original. original boot, MGM, yeah, yeah. I got the original MGM DVD, but like, oh, I guess I. I don't know if I told the story on this, but like, I had to go into my uh, Sam Goody and yeah. specially order that used because I never saw it. And then I'm then I became aware that there was an yeah. actual DVD release, and yeah, I never. I think I might still have that somewhere because I was like, I'm not turning loose of this damn thing. Yeah, the the botch 4K of Night of the Comet that freezes in the radio station scene of the Panasonic players, and then it also uh, that's the, what I got, baby, is a Panasonic yeah, player. Yeah, me been, too. It, and so then upset. LG players won't be able to handle the layer change three fourths of the way in the movie. And then this is probably botched too, but I've never owned any copy of this, so I guess I can go with just the Blu-ray that's included. But I also got Midnight Run from De Niro, and then never um, seen it. I've I've heard of it. I, it's I it's think just it came, a. It's it would awesome. come on cable and it just like didn't look appealing to me, and I'd always change it, even if it was a De Niro. I'm like, nah. I'm I mean, I saw it. it in the theater as a kid and didn't think much of it because I was a kid. But like, I really like De Niro in it. It's really De Niro's movie, but it's like a buddy on the run movie where like he's a bounty hunter and he's trying to get this. Charles Grodin is just this nerdy white collar criminal that he's trying to bring in, but then like everybody wants to kill him. And shit. Yeah, isn't that the dad from the Beethoven movies? Yeah, yeah. Rest yeah, in that's peace, why Charles I was Grodin. like, I I did love the Beethoven movies when I was a kid, but I, I'd see him and I'm like, this can't be a serious film. This is yeah. the this is like a comedy, and I'm like, I dude, De Niro. Mm. Nah, I don't like his comedy shit. He's not funny. There's oh, nothing he, funny about come him. Come on, the, his, he's playing a straight. He usually plays a straight man. Like no, nah, his three best like, comedies are Rocky and Bullwinkle, Midnight Run, and The King of Comedy. You never seen? You ever see Rocky and Bear, Bullwinkle when he's behind the desk and he's like the, the evil Russian? Funny. And he says, "You talking to me? Are you talking to me?" 
I just it's don't. If, if he's funny, it's like not on purpose. Like he's not a comedy genius or anything. Did you ever he's see that movie? The, the the it's a recent one. It was like from ten years ago. I covered it back when I was telling Phil D's about it. Called the Big Wedding. The opening Uh-oh. scene of the movie is like the kids are like all the kids. They have to come home. Like the whole giant family have to come home because one of the the daughters or whatever is getting married. The kids walking in the house like mom and dad were home, and fucking De Niro's got the wife spread eagle on the like the the what do you call it the kitchen island like where you make he's got her spread eagle and he's fucking eating pussy in front of everybody. <laughs> it when when did that come out? I think I saw That's it in the theater probably really like 2012, 2013, something like that. I just I don't know what he's in the Meet the Fockers like oh I just, uh, yeah Meet the Fockers is garbage that's just like that that's when on, um, man like I just don't think he's I just I I'm sorry but just like I just avoid him in comedies like I'm just like nah I'll pass all right time it's to nothing make... against De Niro by the way he's I mean, a great actor select just... comedies the three that I just named for sure select comedies. well I might check the it's called Midnight Run I might check it out I don't yeah. I think it's on Tubi or I saw it somewhere on I'm one of sure it's probably so. everywhere it's probably streaming on everything but uh th- this is this is me make fun of me a cardboard cut I finally this is like the one Vestron <laughs> video one I can never ever find and I got it and it had a sticker on it and I had to peel a sticker off and it left all this goo and I had to scrape it off so now the back's all scratched up but I do have the cardboard cut Vestron release of parents finally and uh, oh. you, that was the one you were oh. making fun of. I told you I was like, "Fuck it!" I just broke down and bought this. I paid thirty bucks, and like, it's pretty beaten, worn on the cover. I didn't, know you, to, I didn't know you had to scrape shit off of it. Maybe yeah, I didn't either because it was like a Finally white sticker on the back. To do that, I just scoured around and I fucking found you a better, you know, a slip copy. I would have looked around. Like I usually got. I was trying I know forever, where the, baby. I, can I never know find where it. the supplies are. You were like, yeah. remember when I ordered off uh, Grindhouse Video, and you're like yeah. uh, Max Overdrive, and you're like, I always look there, and I'm like. You gotta keep looking because everything's in stock on the with the cardboard on it, baby. I just looking at their prices. It's like they're trying to get like thirty and thirty two and thirty five, and it's just like, come on. Yeah, and then for my birthday, my boy Phil D's hooked me up. He mailed me a copy of uh, one of our favorite bands' documentary. This is Guar, the true story of the sickest band in the world. So. As long as it's nothing on the Smiths, baby. I'm sorry. I'm about to, they, I they wish somebody would make a documentary of the Smiths, but they <laughs> they can't they can't get the rights to do all the shit. Oh, what's so that? What's the what's the lead singer's name there? What's his name? Morrissey, right? Quillaby, yeah. I just saw him at he's he's been popping up and I don't know in different in my Facebook feeds for he's whatever like, I don't it, even bro. like the Smiths and he was like signing and this loser has a ba- uh, he's got his bands. He's like got a Smith's T-shirt tour T-shirt <laughs> on. I'm like, you're such a loser. Who wears the, who wears the shirt of the band that they're in? <laughs> you don't, you you don't you don't know about Morrissey about the shirts at the concerts. You don't know like that no, whole thing? but I just thought I thought that was just so lame. I was like, dude, you wear the band. You wear another band you like. I I, you I, saw, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Like he went somewhere. He was sitting in a chair, and they're like, oh, he's wearing a Morrissey. And he was. Yeah, and he was signing. No, nobody was saying anything. They were like saying how great it was. He was signing for this young fan. It was like a young kid there. Or yeah, because he was at the show. BB. B- he he wears. But I just was like, what a loser. He's got a Smith, but I don't like. The no, but anyway, he because he but... rips it apart. He rips it off during the show. That's his thing. Is towards the end of the show, like like not the very last, but right before he does like the encore. He rips his shirt off, like he fucking rips it off, and then everybody goes crazy and fucking claps. I, I meant to show you that one clip of all them fucking girls in that London concert going nuts when he ripped that shit. And that was like when he was older already and shit. He is old. Yeah, he's way old. I mean, he's I think he's like sixty four, but he looks like he's in his seventies yeah. because he had, he went through yes. throat cancer recently. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. and like that's another thing is like I, like because he he cancels a lot of uh, shows because it's like. Uh, it's it's not just like throat cancer like it, like Michael Douglas where it's gone. It's like it, they they grow back like these polyps or whatever they grow back on his throat. Yeah. So like sometimes he'll have to like uh, you know. Is that what Val Kilmer had going to? No, Val Kilmer had like just like a, a legit fucking giant tumor in his fucking neck. Oh. Um, I know he wears a scarf all the time. Yeah, because in that I never watched yeah. it. I'm sure you did because you're such a fucking Tom Tom Cruise fan, but. Uh, he was in the 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 new Top Gun, right? Yeah, like he did. He, he did his briefly. his like scene of like I'm dying, and then Tom's like, Yeah, I know you're oh. dying. 
he's so he was like dying from something yeah like like he's sick it, it's kind of like that thing of like i haven't seen you in 30 years ice man let me go visit you and like i thought i'll be honest with you like i haven't watched top well, gun maverick cool. i watched that scene i watched wow. i watched that scene but i haven't watched the whole movie yet because it's like that scene's kind of got heat with me and here's why is like val kept his cancer shit like very mysterious people didn't know and then like his voice and shit is gone and like he kept it mysterious and there was even that one movie everybody made fun of him for the the snowman where where they do the flashback scenes of the old detective that was trying to catch the old serial killer and like they dubbed over his voice and people were like oh that's so fucking shitty oh what a piece of shit val kilmer is they dubbed over his voice and like he's in, he's in the scenes like you see his mouth moving but it's obviously a double it's so obvious it's not val kilmer's voice you know and people, I was, I was like, because the man was trying to keep his fucking cancer secret, right? <laughs> and it's like, who? And like the obviously the director knew that, like, because I mean, it's it's not like a thing where like his voice comes and goes. His voice is like not to be mean, oh. but it, it, it almost sounds like a Donald Duck voice. He's very struggling because they had to do a lot of surgery in his throat. They had to put, he had yeah. to fucking breathe through the thing. You know what I mean? And um, the hole in his. Throat. I thought he. I hadn't really looked into it, but I just figured he had like the little trach. Mm-hmm. Little trach. Top yeah, he got he's, he's got the trach scar. Throat. That's why he wears the scarves yeah. and shit. So anyway, like he went through a whole thing of trying to keep his cancer secret and all that shit, and he survived. I mean, he's he, you know he's been like I mean, he's recovering. Yeah, I, saw, but, him, I yeah. saw a picture the other day of him getting groceries. Yeah, I mean he's I'm out like, and yeah, about. You're lucky he's to be walking and yeah, stuff, he's in man, good spirits. Could... Yeah, but the the reason yeah. I have heat is like he he's healed, he's healthy, and they bring him in the movie, and and he's just. He's basically like you hear him talk. He can barely talk in the movie, but like he's talking to to Tom and shit, and it's kind of like, yeah, this is it, buddy. Yeah, and he's like, oh, I had to come and see you one last time before you died, and you're in such bad shape, and we're talking about the past and our regrets and shit. I'm like, you don't take a man who survived this illness. He's healthy. He's living for his family, his kids, whatever. You don't take a man and be like, the current condition you're in means you can only play somebody who's dying, and then like the next scene, like lowering the casket tom's over the thing with the sunglasses on crying it's like you don't do that to a man who survived illness <laughs> you just don't well obviously do he went along obviously went along with it yeah. he probably was like just happy to be back on the screen he's like whatever yeah. works but i really think that like even with that he could be playing some like heavies oh yeah yeah like like the fucker smoking through his trach ring badass <laughs> yeah. motherfucker yeah. like he yeah. rides motorcycles and shit and like yeah, he he's it. just so bad to the fucking bone and yeah. like there could you could be having some he's the you know make him the villain or whatever yeah. or you could make him a villain in one of these fucking marvel movies or whatever i mean i don't you know he, he's got to play what works for him i yeah. mean if his voice is all fucked up i mean yeah. he's gotta he's got to it's got to fit that role. Like, ah, uh, yeah. I mean, or, oh, uh, yeah, someone's got fucking cancer. Yeah. I'm sure he'd probably feel, you know, empowered to do something about someone that's got cancer and oh, yeah. do stuff a lot like that, it. too. Yeah, sure. yeah. I mean, we were going so, th- so I got like eight piles of movies here where I've barely gotten through <laughs> my first pile. Like, I, I think we're just going to have to, like, thrown out anything. You haven't thrown really. out anything. I, I'll go through this next pile super fucking okay. quick. So I got my big lots pickups. These are all less than a dollar. Oh, these, these don't matter. Yeah, yeah this, this is last maybe. call. Before Good there was class. Rockstars, there was Dylan. I was like, is this a Bob Dylan movie? I was like, no. I can't even believe you're throwing these ones. If I brought all my big lots pickups <laughs> and my Dollar General ones, we'd be here fucking for days. But if we don't do it, what's the point of movie hoarders, BB? That's true. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, oh, this is about Bob Dylan. Let me pick this up. It's about a poet named Dylan Thomas. But it looks good because all he does is drink in a bar and write poetry. And then Survivor, which is like a generic action movie with Emiliovich, Pierce Brosnan. And then this is the one I was showing you, B. I got this like for 68 cents. Takeshi Kitano, Outrage, Japanese monster movie. Uh, not monster. Mobster movie, the Yakuza movie. Cool. Yeah. So that's like, fun. Yeah, Takeshi Kitano, all his fucking movies are good. And then, yeah, like, I can't remember if I covered this last time we did it, but I got that Virgin Suicides 4K from Criterion. Uh, Criterion? Yeah. I mean, I, is it, so, I should, so I shouldn't just get the Blu-ray, because I've, I've, I've looked at the Blu-ray and was like, man, in the sales, and I'm like, yeah. man, I want to grab that. I should I should hold out for the 4K, huh? I mean, it's a good... I think so, because usually when they do the... set in Michigan. Yeah, usually, it's a, yeah. it's a great movie, too, honestly. But um, got my boy Josh Hart in it. But uh, oh yeah. But yeah, when usually when they do the sales, at least when I when I picked this up like a year ago, the blue gets down to nineteen ninety nine, and then the four K is twenty four ninety nine. So like I just did the four K. 
And then more cardboard cut shit, like trying to complete that Vestron video shit, baby. My best friend is a vampire, which is a really low quality remake. I, of, I of, wouldn't buy. I wouldn't do it, baby. I just kept seeing it. I, yeah, like, twelve no, ninety nine. But it's a low quality it. remake. I actually watched this the other day. This is a low quality remake of um, uh, Jim Carrey's Once Bitten. That's what I thought it was. It's just, just looking at like the cover. It. And the guy that but, what's the guy's name? Robert get, Sean Leonard. He Jim looks Carrey just like Jim back. Carrey, baby. Just like him. So, so what they did was they did like a Teen Wolf two. Exactly. But Teen Wolf 2 is good. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong. I actually probably like Teen Wolf 2 better than I like Teen, Teen Wolf I like 1 them both a equally. lot, but I almost like Teen Wolf 2 better. Almost. It's, it's, when I was a kid, I, I liked them equally, honestly. And here I got the, the, the $36 4K Steelbook Baby. I had to have it. I saw it twice in the theaters. I thought this was going to be my favorite movie of the year, but it turned out to be my second favorite movie of the year. Baby. The Ezra Miller classic of The Flash. Oh, jeez. Oh, how you, how, it baby, how you, going, baby. baby, how are you going to say, oh, jeez, <laughs> to Michael Keaton back into the role of Batman, the only true Batman that's we've ever known? Any, that's the only reason anybody watched that shit was because they, the, the, they knew that was coming. And it's amazing, baby. I mean, all right, Wasn't I, he also in that Batgirl movie? And they, but they didn't he was, release they, that. Wasn't they, they didn't yeah. finish. They chose not to finish it. it. Yeah, that's not what I heard. I heard it's finished. They just don't want to release it. No, it's it's not. I mean, they no, they don't want to release it. But the thing was, was they filmed all the shit, and then they were like, "How much is it going to cost?" Because like a new company bought the uh, Warner Brothers, and they said, "How much is it going to cost to finish it?" Because it was supposed to be made for streaming only. Because it wasn't. It was going to be like another twenty million to finish. No, it, it was like another. Uh, what would they say? Forty-eight million, I think. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, another forty-eight million on top. Of it. And the guy said, like, first of all, it's not good enough quality to um, release in the theater to make our money back in the theater. Uh, I mean, obviously, this is just everybody's still fighting it on the internet. Release it, release it. It's like they've already taken the tax write off for it. You can't just release yeah. something after you take the tax write off. But the 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 studio head guy said like if we pay for like the finish the special effects, um, it's just going to be more money down the drain when like nobody's ever going to like this thing. So everybody loves Batgirl. They love it. It's 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 the lost classic that we'll never get to see. But they only like it because they didn't get to see it. You know what I mean? Yeah, they always love movies that they can't have. I know. They're going to love them even more. Yeah. But but once you get it, once it once it's playing at your local cinema, you don't care. Like, you're not Maybe, getting maybe that should be the studio's new business model is like, yeah. no, nah, we ain't going to release this movie. And then there's like, wait three years. Yeah. And then, and then do some Warner archives. Like, yeah. well, I mean, cheapo fucking Blu-rays <laughs> and make them like 80 bucks. Yeah. Like special edition and like, the slipcover has like real gold on it or something like yeah. that, and then like there's only um there's only like five thousand of them. It comes in a, a seventy dollar briefcase with a bunch of right. art cards in it, yeah. And then it'll get leaked on the internet because someone will rip it, but like you'll make probably a fortune off the special edition release. Yeah. So th this this next one, I actually watched this the other night, and I forgot how great of the movie. I, knew, I always knew this was a good movie, but I forgot how great this movie was. And this is one Boo just handed me like, a couple weeks ago. She's like, oh, I have this for you. And I looked at it. I was like, oh, yeah, this is awesome. The the 90s uh, erotic thriller, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, where a lady, to get revenge, she sneaks in as the nanny to a family, and she breastfeeds the baby so much that the baby doesn't even like its own mother anymore. That happens. And they even show her tit and everything. It's fucking awesome. Um, another that one. Was this... a big lot. That was a Big Lots one? Did she get that from No, big she lots? got it from um, a Disney Movie Club. Because this is actually a Hollywood Pictures back from the late 80s. Oh. Yeah. And, and it's very made raunchy. It available, huh? Uh, yeah. Um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, shit, what's that guy? The Ernie. What's the name? Ernie Wilson? The guy that was in the Ernie Hudson. The guy that was in the Ghostbuster movies. Yeah. He plays the mentally handicapped handyman. He's also in uh, yeah. a Aliens. Was in Aliens. Was he? I know he's in The Crow. Yeah. Ernie Hudson's in Aliens, too, as well. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> yes, he is. He's in you're, one of the Aliens. You're think, no, you're thinking of Hudson. Fucking uh, Bill Paxton. They call him Hudson the whole time. No, it's, it's not I'm Ernie thinking Hudson. of Ernie Hudson's in. Let me, no, let me, it's, it's, I got my release here, baby. I'm going to look. I, I swear to God, he's not in it. There's a black drill sergeant in it that's not Ernie Hudson. Oh, I thought it was Ernie Hudson. It, no, my it's bad. not Ernie Hudson, B. 
I thought that was Ernie Hudson. Are you sure? I'll, 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 I mean, I don't want to bet you, but like, because I don't want to take your money. Weird. It doesn't say anybody. You're wrong. It doesn't. Ernie Hudson. Well, didn't he do one of these fucking movies? Alien. He did an alien he movie. He did Ghostbusters. He did some kind of alien movie. I mean, maybe. That's not the other... only fucking movie that I know Ernie Hudson from, though. Hmm. Baby, because you were bringing up Warner Archive. This is from uh, MGM Archive. I mean, they don't call it that, but that's what it is. But MGM Archive, they just put out like a month ago, and I found out that movie Crooked Hearts about the family of kids that are all fucked up because their dad fucked all the sluts in the town. <laughs> Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah, you were, you yeah. were telling me about it's that. It's really good. But this is a cast list of a movie nobody's ever heard of. This is just like what's on the front of the, of the Blu-ray cover. Baby. Vincent D'Onofrio, Jennifer Jason Lee, Peter Berg, Cindy Pickett, Juliette Lewis, Noah Wiley, and Peter Coyote as the adulterous dad. It's fucking good drama. Uh, all right, now we're going to get into my Spanish bootlegs, BB. These are the ones that I ordered alongside another movie. So I got, because I'm tired of like waiting for this to come out on Blu-ray, and I know it will never happen now that Disney owns it, but uh, the Ki the Kiss of Death remake from the 90s with David Caruso and Nicolas Cage and Sam Jackson. Fucking awesome film noir. And then we have um, Blair Witch 2, The Book of Shadows. And like, yeah, it's a legit release. The only thing with this release, BB, is you got to... Um, like when they show the newspaper clippings, it will flash the Spanish translation at the bottom. And like if you go into the regular Blu-ray men menu, like to turn off subtitles, it will still be there. So you got it on your remote, you your like your actual Blu-ray player, you just gotta go to the subtitle thing and turn it off manually there. But other than that, it's exactly the same, region free, everything. And I know this is gonna sound ridiculous, but I love because you're making fun of me saying Blair Witch Two sucks. I love the way this movie looks, the cinematography. Said, I saw so that movie in the good. theater. I never said it sucked. Why were you, you making fun of me the that. other day? Why would you make I fun of somebody for buying a movie? I, I, I did, no, I did. I never even made fun of you. I told you um, I saw that uh, originally in the theaters when it first, yeah. like on opening night. And there wasn't a lot of people there. Yeah, um, yeah it flopped. And it then didn't make money. Uh, that opens with that great um, plane shot over the, yep. the changing wood leaves yeah. with the Marilyn, Marilyn Manson, Manson song. Disposable teams. And yeah, uh, yeah baby, I, I remember. Uh, I remember. Uh, I well, originally, what was the problem with m my problem with it is originally what was hyped was that there was going to be a Rust and Parr uh, film. And maybe that was like the third installment, but basically yeah. that one did so shitty yeah, it did. that, uh, or either that or they like reworked it or something. But yeah, we never got the rust and par because they did this computer game. I don't know if you if you ever played it. There was this Blair Witch computer game, and it was like that yeah. more I didn't play detective it. and yeah. stuff. Um, and uh, there was the rust and par stuff in there, so I just thought that's what they, you know, the filmmakers said that they wanted to do was like an actual cinematic film film sequel and then we got this with dude i mean it was okay it's okay i've seen it a few times it's definitely yeah. better than that new blair witch the one that they had for that was yeah, that straight is that. dog shit no, no that's dog shit the so. the the only blair witch movie i ever liked was this one like i saw the first two in theaters i didn't like the first one i thought the second one was interesting i just know the director because he was a documentary director so what he did was he filmed tons and tons of shit for blair witch 2 like extra shit and like the studio was like, yeah, this is a horror movie. And he's like, no, it's not. It's 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 an examination of what's true and what's not. And you still have that in the movie, but like the, like basically they recredit recredit they recut it to be more of a horror movie. And he didn't like that. But I'm like, I don't really know how much more like how many like hours of footage you could have really done based on this concept. To be honest with you, <laughs> like it seemed like a 90 minute movie was the perfect format for me. So going back to uh, my boy James Wan, another movie that people complain about not being good enough, because it, it was like t nine bucks or something, I picked up the 4K of The Conjuring 3. It was the last Conjuring movie I had to get. The only one I don't own now is the first Annabelle, which is not very good. So I keep trying to pick up the blue for like five bucks, and it's like always like fucking 13 bucks for some reason. But um, coming down the home stretch here, I have from that Shout Select sale that we did a while ago, Bat, is I, I got the Blu-ray of Cool World, which we need to cover at some point. That's I, I also got it. I didn't yeah. know we were. I thought we were just gonna bulk off our shout. Well, you must have not ordered a lot. Well, this was from a while ago though. But this wasn't from the most recent, like whatever. Oh, the during the summer. Yeah, this it, was the summer one. Yeah, sale? this is summer one. And yeah, then, that's what I'm talking about. That's when I got all my shouts. I, yeah. I thought we were just gonna 
go, okay, now we're moving on to our shout titles. Yeah. But baby, we've been we've been sitting on your shit so long that hasn't even got to put anything out yet. I got go three ahead. left, and then I'll shut up. I'll, I'm gonna save all my keynotes for better part be your three. Shout select titles. They are shout I got, select. I went hog wild shout select. Like, I got my though. valley girl. I took the shrink wrap off. It's all sliced. Like somebody took a box cutter and sliced it down the back of the case. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. I got my valley girl here from that sale, baby, and it looks beautiful. Oh, it's sitting right next to the cool world. You won't believe how bad this looks, BB like the top of the case is cracked the front of it's all like shrunk up like you must have had this in a hot ass thing and then this was the only one out of those that i got that still had the slip cover on it and i gotta say i'm glad because the slip cover is like oh, really you're lucky cool. i mind it and i get a slip cover did you get a slip cover for cool world no cool world was oh, no okay. slip cover valley girl was no slip cover but i got the slip cover on matinee and the slip cover is actually beautiful I got, the va- I, got, I got that too i i don't you know what that told me mm. they didn't sell well yeah man that, that's sell. been out for let me look here. My matinee. What number does it say? Number 37, baby. Yeah, 37. It's still got well. a slipcover. Meanwhile, Cool <laughs> World is 138, and it don't got a slipcover. Uh, cool, cool World, I think they all come eventually come with slipcovers, but you know that one was pretty popular because people were jonesing for that it? to get a Blu-ray I know, I know. for the longest time. And then... No, let- I seen on eBay the Valley Girl slipcover and um and there is a slipcover. They're all they all come with ones when they first come out. Yeah, and then like the because they guarantee like if you I don't really get how they guarantee this either. But have you seen this bad? They do it for both Scream and Shot. They say we guarantee if you order it within the first three months of release. It's like well, that doesn't make any sense. Like you should say this for so many copies like. Because, like, three months, like, what, when three months passes, you just take the slips off and throw them away? Like, is this, like, a vinegar syndrome fucking situation? Or, like, what? Okay, last but not least, and I'll let you get into your shit, and this might be my last one for the night, depending on how much time we have left over, but I have the the very rare, hard to get in the U.S. It's the import version of the 4K, uh, very, very lame, mediocre transfer of uh, George Romero's Martin. Okay, baby, go ahead. What do you got on your pile now? Um, excuse me? Well, hold on. How did you just think you're going to glaze over Martin yeah, like that? I mean, you we're an hour bitch. and ten minutes into it just covering my two little, my mini piles of movies and uh, tiny piles of movies because we, we kept going off topic. So it's like, hey, we'd be the here floor... all night if we went over what that's been buying lately. The, yeah, I the mean... floor is here. Well, that's why we got to do, we, we can't make the people hold wait on. for, okay, uh, so you, you know, so a whole you year. Finished... So you you didn't even watch that Martin 4K, huh? Well, that that got the 4K too, but but that pre-ordered it, okay. and he got the standard edition, and uh, he loves this transfer. It's, it's the best that this film has ever looked, and you just you just didn't want to pay what twenty five twenty six dollars for thirty seven dollars like I paid. Yeah, I paid the thirty seven dollars. Well, I that's not what I paid in the diabolic pre order, sir. I think I paid like twenty seven dollars for this thing shipped. Amazing. So you should have pre ordered it, baby, but you were oh, like Keen and Han, this is I gotta say this is my favorite non dead Romero film. Um it's I mean I don't what what are you like a dark half fan or <laughs> Yes. <laughs> How did you Are guess? You really? How did you? Yeah. Fuck how did you know? Dark half, baby. I'm split down the middle between uh, you, Dark you, Half so and Monkey you got, Shines. Monkey Shines is great and it's an underrated film and everything, but I'm not gonna put it up like, man. I put like fucking the Crazies or Season of the Witch higher up than Monkey Shines. I do enjoy it, but it's like one of those oddball. But yeah, well, well now that we're on, so we can trans- transition right into this because Bat this summer has just been basically spent all this time trying to complete all of his uh, Romero's on Blu-ray. And the only ones I couldn't get were the um, Eureka because they're, I don't have a region free player, but apparently umbrella just put out monkey shines, but I'm wondering like the thing about umbrellas and I don't know how many releases I've got a few here. By I got four or but five like, and I'm not impressed. BB. I'll go to them when they're the only ones I have a film out, but that silver bullet transfer they put out is garbage. I'm going to have to rebuy the 4k from screen factory at some point. Oh yeah. Well, why would you even, geez, why would you even go there? <laughs> like really? I don't buy shit from them unless like, yeah, I can't like, basically I bought martyrs because you can't yeah. get that, uh, Nowhere Weinstein yeah. fucking, yeah, disc anymore. It's like, wait, I mean, those are I have one the of DVD the first gen. Yeah. yeah, I had the DVD too. And then I'm like, oh, I'll just get, I'm sure they put out a Blu-ray and it's like, yeah, that thing's going for a hundred bucks. And it's like, yeah, but umbrella has got a region free, you know, 
But um, no, so I've been trying to go through. But yeah, aside from um, uh, Dark Half, Monkey Shines, and um, Bruiser. Uh, oh, Bruiser's never Bruiser. had a Blu-ray before. I it, have the it DVD. Ha- it has. There's like a weird, uh, I can't remember what country it's from, but everybody complains about the Bruiser Blu-ray being like a DVD upscale or some bullshit. Uh, uh, okay, so that's probably, a, if it's an upscale, then it's probably a bootleg. It's probably not a legit release. Um, but I have the DVD, the original DVD. I remember getting it for real cheap. But yeah, yeah I got aside from that, everything's been put out on either Blu-ray or 4K. Uh, aside, like Martin just Did you get the right one of the, the theme park one? Yeah, I got that one. Okay. I had that pre-ordered, baby. Because I'd already seen, because it came out on Shutter or whatever, and somebody yeah. had already ripped it, and so I watched yeah. like a, I'd already watched. I didn't. I mean, I don't pay for Shutter, so but you know, I yeah, made, I, got I a, made the mistake. I did. I got a dub of yeah. it. You know, it, look, it was like a seven twenty, but it looked just as good. And I'm like, yeah, I like this. And so when uh, there was a French Blu-ray first, yeah. and then I was like, I was not paying all that money because they wanted like fifty bucks for it. And I'm like, mm, no, baby, somebody's. They're gonna put the, the it out shutter Blu ray, yeah. Here. Shutter Blu rays, all the shutter original Blu rays, like, like, yeah. Well, they, RLGJE they, put yeah. it films actually put the Blu ray out, and um, yeah, I guess they handle and their stuff's good. They did that, um, uh, I think they did the Nightmare on Elm Street and the Friday the 13th documentaries. Um, mm-hmm. so like, they they're a good handle distributor, stuff. they put out the Craig Zoller films, they're really good. But yeah, baby, so uh, like Eureka's the one. See, and it'd be fine for you to get the Monkey Shines and the Dark Half Blu-rays. But yeah, Umbrella just re- you know mentioned you know as releasing Monkey Shines. But see, they're weird. Like, and I think they're smart because they don't want to like piss off the licensor. Yeah. So the supposedly all their discs are um, region free but yeah. they like if you see if they if you're following them on Facebook for instance and and people always like they just put out kids on blu-ray yeah. and people were like and they would never they would never and they'll answer all kinds of other questions they yeah, will they never tell, tell you if it's region yeah. if it's region free and um, turbines notorious for this too they'll put on there that it's region B but it's actually region free. Right. Like that's all. They on have the I have a lot of releases that say that say region B on the back and you just put it in. And it's fine. Yeah. But it's not actually, that's not for every one of their releases. Cause I just got this last house on the left Blu-ray, mm-hmm. uh, their little special edition in import, um, mm-hmm. which isn't a big deal. I heard that they, I wanted to see if they, someone said that they just used the arrow transfer and I'm like, okay, well, I already got two copies of that. But their supplementals are actually on PAL DVDs, so I'm like, okay, I can play those, but I don't know. I really just got it for the packaging and the mm-hmm. fact that it's a limited number um, edition, and I didn't import this, so if somebody in the U.S. had it. But yeah, I put it in, and then it said it didn't support it, and I'm like, wow, because I've got Chainsaw 2 here, and it's yeah. it's region-free, so... I keep meaning to forget you to ask you because you just got that Panasonic player. Uh, have you done the the hack? Does the hack work on yours the way it does mine? Because I know we have two different operating systems because your system, your uh, player uses a different chip. But <laughs> I got around a lot of my region lock disc, like the uh, the uh, what do you call it, the second sight ones and shit. Like it might not hitting. even be region lock. I never try. I just tried it on my regular Sony oh, okay. the other day, yeah. and I was like. And the only way I can play the PAL discs is through my, um, because I got an Australian DVD here. I can play it through my laptop. So, so yeah, basically like anything that I can't find or is like TV shows, I'll just buy an Australian uh, release of it. Especially like I was buying a bunch of, that's some of the DVDs I was buying a bunch of like um mtv stuff now that's another thing like i'm telling everyone out there mtv a lot of these tv companies are not gonna put if they haven't put the movie or t or they, if they haven't put the tv show on blu-ray they ain't ever gonna do it now, yeah. a lot of these companies uh the tv sh- tv uh companies they're getting out of the media game altogether i think hbo's yeah. cashing out of the media game too as well yeah we talked about it but like yeah they just <laughs> shit the bed and and fx did it right i think fx did it because they knew they were going to get bought by disney but there's like a bunch of fx shows 
that just like the last like they did like three or four seasons of blue and then like the last two it's like oh here's your dvd fuck off. just dvd yeah that's what they did hbo did with the deuce they did yeah. um the first two seasons in uh on blu-ray and then they put the last season out i think on only dvd maybe yeah. it's on i don't think it's on blu-ray and then they put a box set out that's only dvd and yeah. the, the authoring is terrible on like the last disc yeah. so yeah. Um, but, uh, rushed quality. but yeah, anybody out there that's like these TV shows or whatever, you might as well quit holding out because they're never going to, you yeah. know, they're, they're like that streaming fodder all day long. And if it's something hard to find, just order, just, you know, I don't know how many people have laptops with disc drives anymore though. So probably hardly anybody. Cause they're, that's, they're, a, like, that's they're, a downside, even, yeah. but, the, but they play that they play region lock discs, like no problem. Yeah. So. You know, a lot of the TV, that's so I was importing some Australian stuff. But, uh, no, I got the, the, the turbine because I really did legitimately think that it was be. It said Region B on the back. Right. But I was like, ah, turbine, you. I know you guys are at all your discs, but no. So turbine's a weird company. And so that's why I'm, like, worried about Umbrella, too, because it's like, well, maybe this is really region locked, and I'm going to Yeah, I think if it was up to ups. Umbrella and Turbine themselves, but, like, they just know certain licensors that are more strict than others. Like, like, they're, like the Ruben scene shit, like, like I had to buy Dawn of the yes. Dead from Zavi, and then I had to go through eBay, and, like, you had to go through Diabolique to get Martin. It's just... I got Dawn of the Dead off Amazon, but now you can't. Yeah. You can't get crack that down. standard and will not ship it, but, um, yeah. He's, he probably said something, and I told you this back in the 90s. Mm. He used to, like, look around for little fan pages, and then he would, yeah. like, email them and tell them he was going to sue them if they didn't remove the Dawn of the Dead picture. <laughs> He's a fucker. I mean... I got his autograph on uh, Martin Chet, like, a check that was used on Martin. And yeah, got I remember that. And, like, that was cool. He's great in Martin. He makes that appearance. Like, yeah. I, you know, his brother... Um, uh, did mute. I think his brother did music. Yeah, and, he did. Like, he was did a the soundtrack, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, so, I mean, but yeah, he's like fucking really like, I, you know, a lot of people are like, okay on the fan sites and like, yeah. I get, you know, Hey, I own the rights to these and fucking they're sought after. Like, I'm going to squeeze what I can out of them. But in mm-hmm. the, in the, in the U S boutiques are fucking dumb because they they're are. like, Ooh, that's too expensive. We're just going to license a bunch of MGM bullshit and, it, and we're going to pack and put fancy packaging on yeah. it. And we're going to sell it to you for 55, $60. And it's just like, dude, you could, you guys could charge a hundred dollars for a Dawn of the dead box set. If you yeah. went like fucking all out, like, ye- are you they kidding just don't me? don't want to do the sell- effort. They're, they're just like, like if it was me, I, mean, I know we had this discussion before, maybe even on air, but you know me, Bats. Like, so I'm sitting there running on boutique, right? And I'm getting all these MGM licenses and I'm making a killing with cardboard cucks and steel books and all this whatever bullshit they're doing. I'm just yeah. like, if I got a fucking license, Dawn of the Dead from uh, Richard Rubenstein, and I'm going to sell X amount of copies and I'm going to do all this work on the special features. If I'm just breaking even on Dawn of the Dead, I'm still fucking it's doing still it. Worth it. I'm still yeah. doing it because it's like and because it's got your name and you can be like, yeah, our company put that out. Like that's big. That's big for your company to get mm-hmm. you out there. And hell, that might even get oh your foot in the door. Like, what if you got your foot in the door with fucking, you know, uh, like a like a corporate store where you got your yeah. like I've never seen fucking vinegar syndrome or Severin stuff. No. I've seen shout stuff at Walmart, and maybe people are like, we don't want our stuff in Walmart. Okay, but you know, you baby, do you want to make money or what are you in this for? Like, if, if it was me personally, and I was running a boutique, and I know we had these discussions shit, but if I was running a boutique, baby, I would be like. I'm a movie fan. That's why I started a boutique label. And I want to put fucking copies of movies in movie fans' hands. So, like, if I got to sell them out, out of fucking 7 Eleven, I'm fucking selling them at 7 Eleven. Yeah, you want to reach the largest, like, yeah. and that's the other thing. You want to know why uh, Anchor Bay was so successful? Because, yeah. dude, you could get those any, you could get them at Walmart. Anywhere. You could get them at, I always got my stuff at Sam Goody or on Q or whatever, but, at, or FYE. I mean, a lot of people are going, oh, I was ordering off the, you know, whatever. But, you know, like fans, they want to go and like, oh, it's Halloween time. And they want to go and like buy five, six movies and watch yeah, them the, have that fun. night. They, yeah. didn't, they didn't want to wait 
two weeks for yeah. their movie to come. You know, if you order through this one boutique, they they'll make you wait a month, even you if know. it's in stock. Maybe. And then they'll shame you for asking where your fucking oh, copy yeah. of your movie is. Yeah. And they'll probably share your information with a bunch of their like cult yeah. cult uh, members and go, look at this person has no respect for us. Yeah. Here's their email. Here's sick. their address. Send them a bomb. Yeah, sick, we'll sick our fans on you. We weaponize right. our fans. They, they pay us money, but they'll do our bidding. <laughs> anyway, so, so hey, there there are two things. <laughs> two things in this world that's going to put these boutiques out of business and they're called mega millions and powerball so mm. enjoy it now you greedy fucks because eventually there won't be a license left for you to get but yeah you got to respect anyway coming back to the martin release you got to yeah, respect go. second sight for oh, respect doing them what they've done two yeah. rubenstein you know releases and that was the thing i remember you putting second sight over so like i thought it'd just yeah. be like a no-brainer uh, that you could already have pre-ordered and had martin on the way and you were like I'm waiting for it to go down. I'm like, yeah, well, baby, don't wait too long because there might be a, it might be where you can't even order it anymore because these region locked or they're supposed to be region locked. Like that special edition has Blu-rays in it. Those are region locked, and uh, these these imports, it's getting harder and harder to. And then you go, you want to, you go, well, I'll go on eBay. There's companies that have the imports there, and it's like, yeah, yeah but they know what they're doing. And they and they want to convince everybody that the movie's out of print. And then they want to mark it up and stuff. So you I mean you can't. I mean, I, on, e on can't eBay trust with that. the eBay sellers, I Diabolic mean, doesn't do that kind of stuff. There's they sometimes you can even get it cheaper than the boutique is selling. Look, it I, I, don't, I don't have anything against Diabolic DVD. I've done maybe three <laughs> orders from them. Here's my thing of Diabolic DVD. Like you I'm know, shocked. That's all because you like you do like imports. Like I I'm, do, but I, I just get them yeah. from other people that like a have them. Like every right. you go on Diabolic. I mean, I was telling you this the other day. You go on Diabolic DVD if there's five movies they got that i want to order like i don't even get why they got the page still up for these titles like if there's five movies i want to yeah, order that's... three out of the five are out of stock so then i'm going to well, order two that's because they only did a free order on them and they never like yeah. really like honestly what they buy a lot of copy well, i've i've kind of figured this out is the stuff that they actually get in stock is like far and few between and it's only going to be like yeah without a shadow of a doubt this is not going to be sitting collecting dust uh, titles basically yeah. and like i can't believe they didn't maybe they did and they just sold out so quick i can't believe they didn't get that that second sight chainsaw box set B -B, when we, and when, have more in when like, we that's got, a no-brainer that's gonna yeah. sell when we got the warehouse wherever we want to put the warehouse and you're managing it dude we're, <laughs> we, we ain't gonna be afraid to stock them deep and sell them cheap i'll say that we're not gonna sit there planning for months for our 10 copies of something to come in so we can fucking sell them all for 28 dollars well, you know my, my whole point with a uh, diabolic is that like i think that they really are genuinely want to be like i don't know exactly how they make money like i really can't when like when synapse has got a movie and and their pre-order is more than what your pre-order is like i don't understand how you're able to give people a discount and and make money so like i gotta think that they're like really legitimately like being just like helping people get the movies for their collection i mean and, like facilitating I... that obviously there's some way they're making money off whatever they get in stock obviously they'll probably mark that stuff up i would dude if if all of a sudden you're seeing a release that is now out, like out of print and you have a handful of copies of course you're gonna mark it up you're not gonna mark it up what it's yeah. going for. I mean, eBay, I don't even but... know if Diabolic does it. I mean, I don't, I don't have I a problem with any Diabolic yeah. pricing or anything. It, you know, they have the movie. If you want to pay, pay whatever the price is. I'm just saying, like, they don't have shit. <laughs> like, I go on that website and everything. It's just like, you no, know, the little stuff. devil horn logo you really and shit. Basically, use them as your middleman when you're like, oh, so and so said that it's up for pre-order, and then you go over to Diabolic to basically secure yourself a copy. And you you pre-order it, and I'm gonna be honest with you, most of the stuff that I pre-ordered there, they've never gotten in stock. Yeah, and like, and they like never get in the, stock. the thing is, is like you know me, BB, like like I do orders from the boutiques in the UK. I get my ship shit sent sent from the UK without a problem. But like, you like but I, you can't order from Second Sight hardly anymore. They're not. They're really cracking down on stuff. It appears as though. I mean, I just think it's the. Um, they don't have and they, expensive baby too. I, I've gotten a lot of uh, I've gotten a lot of um, 
like their titles as they're going out like second sight and 88 films and all those and 101 films and like yeah they just stock them deep selling cheap i mean second sight's a little bit different they're a little more premium yeah. i should say compared to 88 films and a, a 101 films but yeah it's like i get the things like i, I get them when they're on sale and whatever and or when they're on the closeout for going out of print and the shipping is usually around 10 or 12 bucks whatever but the, the releases are so cheap that i'm taking chances on some rare weird shit so, I mean, I don't, like, that's why I just, like, everybody's like, do you boil it, do you boil it? I'm like, I just fucking go to the website. Now, the only two exceptions it were. It makes the shipping che- cheaper, I will say, Di- Diabolic yeah. does, so. But it just, I mean, I'm not here to tell you to shop at Diabolic DVD. I'm not telling you to, to not. I'm just telling you my that experience is, yeah, of, sure. I wanted to do business. They didn't want to do business. They have they have pages for movies that have been, I know some of those they, fucking movies. They, they're not going to wait for you to shit or get off the pot, baby. <laughs> I don't know what you, I don't know why you bring this up, honestly. Because two releases, Richard Rubenstein said, don't sell Dawn of the Dead don't sell martin i was like okay i got mm-hmm. him from other other methods it's fine you had to L- fucking lance at the valhalla group he took care of me baby because because right. i grouped those uh spanish uh bootlegs in with the Big kiss Lan- of death Lan- and blair witch too group just had to take care of me on existence on that yeah. spanish spanish so i don't talk to my bootleg. boy i don't care i mean you're like diabolic diabolic and i'm like valhalla <laughs> group all day long like i've done way more business with valhalla group in the last year than i've done in the last 10 years well, of diabolic dv it's I was fine a little nervous with them and but then when you said yeah i've gotten stuff from them i'm like okay because they've got and i saw that existence and I want, and that was, I just pulled the trigger on that uh, Saturday, baby, because I was like, that you got to shit or get off the pot if you want to complete your Cronenberg oh, okay, collection. Baby. That's the only one I needed, so. Wait, wait till, wait till, you, I had, I've had fucking Lance from Valhalla personally email, he's like, wait till you get your shit, baby. He's going to do. He's going like to, along the lines, don't be, don't, don't, like, blow it out of here is another one that we both yeah. highly recommend. Yeah, but blow it he, out of here. So a bunch of people, a bunch of cucks or whatever. These are like scammers probably trying to get like the movie for free because they yeah. were mad that they paid a little bit more than what they wanted to. Yeah. And so I think that's what's basically once you told me, no, Valhalla Group's good. And I'm like, okay, baby, that's all I needed was somebody personally I know that's never had like blow it out of here. I was always nervous. And then I place an order. Yeah. And then I remember I was like, wow, this all stuff came properly packed and everything. Yeah. And um, that's how Valhalla is too. Professionally I, packed, printed, yeah. uh, uh, invoice slips with your order no info bootlegs. on it. Like yeah. no bootlegs unless, no, it, no it, bootlegs. unless it's like a import and you yeah. know, Oh, I might potentially be not getting like, I just ordered existence, yeah. but they also have like Caligula too, which I already know that Caligula releases actually has a really nice 1080. But I didn't get that yet. That's in my cart, too. I need to pull the trigger on that Caligula Blu-ray. I mean, I got a rip, but it's got extra features on it. And that's what uh, actually made me pull the trigger on uh, Existence is because it's got, like, a bunch of extras. And I might have a commentary, too, as well. Mm -hmm. And I was like, for for kind of a bootleg import here, you guys are impressing me. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It, it is, it is what it, I just, like, I just, you know, just like some people, they only buy, like, literally just anything they've ever ordered online. Like, there are some people that for the last 10 years, the only website they've ever ordered anything online from is Amazon. It's like, I just don't, like, I source all my shit from different people, depending on what they have, what the price is, and all, not even just what the price is, there's, like, Valhalla and even blow it out of here. Like, they always do those, like, buy two, buy three, get this percentage mm-hmm. off, and, like, that's how I got the price down, um on martin from 37 to 33 or whatever it was and i'm like i, I just wanted to like i just wanted to do a because i was going to get it from blow it out of here but he didn't well, have baby, any other movies that to i wanted that. to group you went over to I, I linked you to grindhouse video uh which i think i know i've ordered a bunch of stuff from there yeah, i really I like have good experiences with grindhouse i think video. you should have yeah. went over I, I linked you they had a few copy they had two copies in stock over there and they were only uh 30 dollars baby i don't know I think they do like a price break or whatever if you order. I mean, they've got all kinds of imports. Like I do trust Grindhouse I thought, Video. I by thought, the way. It, yeah, I thought. I mean, Grindhouse Video is a different situation because there's a guy literally sitting in a storefront. Like I trust in that. Shop. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you'll have the price like uh, so. I ordered anyway. Getting out back on the Romero, I actually ordered the Night Riders uh, Blu-ray because mm-hmm. I thought uh, they were getting ready to go out of print with this. Shout was because like I don't know. I guess they still have it, but like I yeah, think it just the, never the sold. Are, yeah. I think it's dwindling a bit. Anyway, he had a cop. I ended up getting one off of Grindhouse Video, and it had this, like, the store sticker on it. Yeah. 
like he pulled it off the shelf. It was a this shelf copy, selling. yeah. Because I've, I've never gotten one with the sh- with the shelf sticker on it, but but he does I've have shelf. A couple from him with shelf stickers. Yeah, though. I've never. That's weird. I've never. But yeah, like uh, I have a box here that was from him from an arrow sale. Uh, but really, the only the only time I'll I'll bother to buy arrow shit is uh, on a grindhouse. When so, he's doing a arrow. sale. Yeah, yeah. like for, I think I think almost all my I think arrow. He does blue was, underground too. He'll do blue underground he? sales. Yeah, I yeah. think. So. I, I don't know. I think I'm done times. with Blue Underground. To be honest with you. Did you get Did you get the the uh, Maniac 4K? Like no, you no. I'm going to pull the trigger on the Maniac the, 4K. Uh, the it's, what is it? Fit. New York it's, City it's Ripper movie. Blue. Yeah. You okay. know, I mean, come on, man. You know he's got to fucking have taken painstaking time and stuff on the Maniac 4K because it's like his own movie. Like, I, yeah, I mean, I when I say I'm done with, with Blue looks, Underground, I think it's just going to be. I'm. I don't. I don't know the couple 4Ks I got from them. Like I don't know how to feel about them honestly. Like You're I don't want to. I don't want to trash well, them. Like, but they're Argento. Like... He's got Argento licenses, which I seems know. like how did you pull that one, baby? I like don't I don't know if he's. I don't know if he still got Inferno because he still he he'll sell them fucking Inferno uh, Blu-rays. But I... why, where's the where's the 4K, baby? Yeah, it's I got a beautiful the film. I got the Inferno. Um... Well, I, I think he's trying to do everything that he still has the rights to that he's done before. Yeah. I think he's trying to do them all. Well, in 4K. I'm just saying he's still selling those four yeah. those Blu-rays of Inferno, yeah. so he must still. I he got must have Inferno in the three the, pack, dude, with Cat and Nine Tails and Deep Red. Yeah, well, he's put out a few different release versions of it. So, but like, you know, you can't get a, you can't seem to get a 4K out of him, and everyone's saying Disney owns that movie, and like, I don't know. Who's yeah, Disney got the thinks 4K. they own it, but they don't. But that's not. But they're telling everyone they do. Yeah, yeah, and like, it's just a thing that well, has they, to get. They don't want to do 4K themselves, which actually Disney's stupid because like that's one that'll probably do real well for you. Yeah. I mean, like, just license probably... it out. Like, don't even touch it. Just license yeah. it out. Yeah. I'm... You know, but uh, no, I had to break down and get that. Uh, I had to break down and, and do that devilish stuff and get Arrow's window box release, and I paid quite a bit for it. But uh, I think I got. Wait, what, what, what is quite a bit? This is movie hoarders. This is where we unveil the sickness. Like we told people on movie hoarders, that we're, we're peeling back the sickness. Just say how much you paid. I don't know. Me. Maybe for like fifty bucks, sixty bucks. Oh, maybe. Oh, yeah, maybe. You know, you know, down to the penny what you paid. Well, maybe you know what those window. I gotta say, this is pre. This is before Arrow started fucking up with their four Ks and, yeah. and trying to pass off four Ks that were fucked up. Then they pretended yeah. they're not fucked up. Oh. You just gotta find player baby yeah we 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 got we we got bought and we got we we got zavi customer service now we got people who used to talk about okay, orders this predates and, it then yeah. this is back in the day when everybody was sucking their dicks and being like arrow is just the greatest boutique that's ever existed that's why that one guy left him to go start his own shit because it's like oh they got bought they mm. all do yeah. i mean i thought somebody left vinegar syndrome they not did. too long ago yeah they, they did. will they'll do that and they'll go start these little micro boutiques uh but anyway no i should i this release has like some great artwork and all their uh window box releases were quality yeah. i guess apparently they did a dawn of the dead one the 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 one that they did they it's like the theatricals on blu-ray but yeah. then the other the rest of the, the films are on are. dvd yeah. but that was a window box and all these window boxes by the way are uh, region free mm-hmm. they come with a region free pal disc but you know unless you do some finagling or you have the right setup you probably only be able to watch it on your laptop and i actually got this release because i already have a rip of the transfer and so i could have just been like i got a rip who gives a shit you know but uh, with the artwork and then there's a po- there's actually a po- all those uh box those those window boxes have po- full posters inside of them yeah yeah and i mean they were different- cool i mean there were good releases for sure yeah they're really like jam-packed anyway there's like this argento uk documentary that i've pretty much never seen that's on there and that's kind of why obviously i prefer the transfer and that blue and the blu-rays are all region free too by the way i watched the transfer but really why i went i need to get that is because the supplementals had that it was like a feature length uk documentary on and i've seen probably two i have seeded a documentary in argento and then there's this one from the 80s Mm. that came out on its own separate release that's really good on Argento. So I just wanted to see a third take. Those were really good documentaries. Yeah. And I wanted to see the, the, the other take on this. So, yeah, I pulled the trigger on it. And um, also, while we're on the Arrow box, I when you were all heeing and hawing about that 4K, baby, you know what I did? 
I was like, I already got the 4K, baby, but I always wanted that Arrow window box DVD that has the Italian Wampir because, yeah, I was you a little disappointed. Yeah. I, I was disappointed with the Second Sight release in the sense that, and that's why I didn't buy their little deluxe box. I just got the standard. Yeah, book. I didn't want that book and all that bullshit. I was expecting, I, yeah, and I was expecting that release to have Wampir on it. And I would have bought their special edition, and I was like, it ain't got Wampir on it in 1080? Because yeah. it is a different cut. Like, they cut it, like, yeah. uh, Argento cuts it in a different way, and he uses uh, Goblin. Right, for the entire score. So yeah, I would uh, I, I would have jumped on anything pre ordered. I would have sucked Diabolic DV's dick if there was a version out there that had Wampir on it. Uh, so. Yeah, so the only one that ever put that out was the Arrow Video yeah. DVD window box. So I had to have that. And uh, you know, if you remember correctly, uh, they had held that release up to the uh, to try to get that director's cut right. that's all black and white that got unearthed here recently, but they couldn't even. And, and mind you, before that, I already assumed Wampir's on there, baby. At least there's two cuts on there. It'd be great if you got three cuts. But no, I get the release, and there's is only the theat, which I love the theatrical cut. But I mean, the Wampir cut's fun, man. Actually, I yeah. you know if you're not too keen on the film, go. You might actually like the Italian cut. It's like a little bit. I different. mean, I like the Argento cut of Dawn of the Dead personally. Like when I when I had that Anko. Well, I still have it, but that Anchor Bay, like, whatever yeah. box set. Like, I would always watch that fucking cut. Like, not all the time, but I would rotate them, but I would more often. I mean, I don't know why you get, like, this thing just because I didn't, like, run out. I mean, I would have literally, if, like, there wasn't the thing I of, like. I you didn't like the movie. No, I was just like, well, no, I like the movie. I mean, it's it's far from my favorite. Like, it's probably not even in my Romero top five, personally. But, I mean, I think it's. Blasphemous. A, I think it's a good. <laughs> why is it blasphemous? It's like, why is there. <laughs> because it's so good, man. Like, I no, don't it's like... really good. Yeah. It's really good. But it's, like, it's I'm... just a different thing. It's just, like, any. Like, oh, I mean. It's very. Like, yeah. I really like the crazies, personally. I like crazies Me more too. than I like Night of the Living Dead. You know what I mean? But, it, like, you know, it's like I'm in the mi- minority on that. But it's just, like, um, I don't know. Like, I don't, you know, it's 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 cool. I like Martin. I, I You know the thing I like, I'll be real honest with you, the thing I like about Martin more than anything else <laughs> about it, more than, like, you know, whatever, the story, the whatever, I just like the fact that... Um, it just feels really homemade. Like I also really like. There's always vanilla, and people are just like, because it's not horror, they I don't do care. Like, I I like. There's always vanilla yeah. too. I don't give a shit what anybody says. I really, uh, really what hooked me was that whole uh, scene with a uh, uh, Ray, the Ray uh, actor there. Uh, what's his name? Um, or I can't whatever. remember his last name. Yeah. Anyway, he's great when he's like when him and his dad get those girls from the, the bar. Dad. He's like, oh yeah, I knew you were yeah, gonna say and that. He yeah. like smokes. Yeah, he like smokes weed with his son, and he's like. And then like all the character. girls are laughing because like this old man's in their apartment. Because like when I watch that movie, you know, then they end up all just fucking the old guy anyway. But like when I watch that movie, like just the whole vibe of that how he's like going around all those different girls like that's pretty much like what me and phil d's were doing in like our early to mid 20s on it's actually all the way up to our late 20s to be real honest with you uh when we moved to la but like yeah that was like pretty much my life back then like you know like i watched that movie and it's such a fondness and like even pittsburgh i mean it's a different city but it even kind of looks a lot there has a lot of similarities to cincinnati where i grew up so it's like i totally dig the vibe with that uh you know, and people, oh, it's well, not well, horror. Not There's mention. not a zombie eating a brain, bro. Well, well not to mention that film is a uh, pre before like abortion was legalized. Yeah. So like that actually shows like the horrors. And actually, I think that that film now with what's been going on um, yeah, with, with you know things. the laws and stuff mm-hmm. now is even more uh, relevant and stuff because it's like, oh, you want to like because Romero that scene where she goes to get the back alley of abortion and stuff and how he did his classic door like um I can't remember I don't know if it's in a commentary where he said yeah early on I was like he tried to do it with um uh there's um season of the witch and Mm -hmm. there's always vanilla where he does this stuff where they're like going through doors and he's doing the shotgun editing and stuff and like really that like makes that scene more makes you more anxious and like uh it's really I don't know yeah really gets into the woman's head of like it's like she's like trapped in this nightmare and can't find her way out and it's like horrible stuff that's happening and like i don't know like a bad trip or like a bad dream or whatever and he does it too and um that's why like season of the witch overall is not like a great film but like 
the editing style and like the experimental mm-hmm. stuff uh, with the dream sequence at the beginning. Um, Season of the Witch is the one I need to get into more. Like I think I've only. Did you get the Arrow Blu-ray or do you? Yeah, have yeah, it? I got the. I actually did the box set thing, the whole box set oh, thing. Oh, you got before the original box set. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah that goes for a lot. I mean, they still I got know. the individual Blu-rays, so and it's cheaper to just buy those than yeah. to try to get a scalper to sell you yeah. a, a sealed box set on fucking like, eBay. So and like I remember when that box. I can't remember. Like, I really can't remember how much. I I think I got it through like Bull Moose or something. It was like sixty something bucks and i was just like i just want these yeah movies it's going for like a hundred now i mean i think because a lot like of people i mean i think probably like the more commercial movie out of that box set is probably the crazies but the, the crazies are weird like people don't even really like the crazies that much which i don't get like i think the crazies is just as good as anything he ever did but um yeah just like when i saw it shot up in price and shit i'm like okay it was like that and like monsters the tv show like that box set i can't remember how, it was like 40 something i'm like okay cool but like the retail was really like 70 which i mean nobody would pay that for a dvd box set but all the room and scene shit goes out of print quick so then monsters people could people are all crying like oh i want to get monsters now and uh I, all i cared about before was tales from the dark side and they made a thousand dvd to, copies of that yeah but... and now there's like a box yeah there's like a whole box i got it actually I got it in my one of my carts, Amazon or yeah, eBay I got it not too long like, ago. I, was, I watched some of it. Yeah. I'm just gonna get the box set. I guess I think Echo Bridge put the box set out. Where somebody, like somebody super yeah. cheap. There does that cheap shit. Too, but it yeah. wasn't like that. Those were properly a bunch of people were bitching about the transfers and stuff. I'm like, yeah, it's coming off those tapes. Those yeah, like, yeah, it's coming. Same with Friday the 13th the series. Tapes, they all look like, like shit. Like you just gotta just be lucky for, to have it. Yeah, you're just lucky to watch it. And also yeah. too, they don't charge you a lot for. It. I mean, I guess if you wanted right. to scout for the monster like, set, but. 25 bucks for that yeah. tales from the darks i bought yeah. the first season when it first came out on that dvd yeah. and then i just didn't pay it it wasn't that i didn't want the other seasons yeah. i just didn't pay attention when it was coming to walmart or maybe walmart right. didn't get the other seasons they and might who knows. Have, yeah. but um yeah so aside from that i don't have that box set the tales from the dark side box set and i don't like the tales from the dark side movie might be blasphemous it just came out on 4k too like you, you know what's funny is i waited for that blue of that for so fucking long for so long and then i was like fuck it i just bought the dvd and baby then, i went oh really it, it, it's, oh, yeah, yeah and then the six blue? months later it screams like here's tales from the dark side of the blu-ray so i bought the blu-ray and now they're like no here's a 4k i was like no nah, i'm done yeah the, i wouldn't the... even if you got the blu-ray yeah. honestly i think i might have the dvd and i'm probably i'm i don't know i i feel like that's on my soul though because i was like it's supposed to be Romero, but this ain't Romero. Get the Divati. I don't like the film. I don't. I'm sorry, I, but I I like it, but it's a pale a imitation of Creep Show. Yeah. But um, yeah. I mean, the other the the other offshoot <sighs> stuff I got was the Creep Show TV show. I know they've got a fourth season out. I, I bought all those because blow it out of here. Yeah. They blew it out of there, baby, and I got they I think two of them. them. Yeah, they're, I got, they're super yeah, I got cheap because I think they're RLG. Yeah, they're super yeah. cheap. Yeah. So, and I mean, I well, don't have Shudder and, and I, a bunch Unfortunately, of I do have Shudder, so that's where I watch it. A bunch of people were telling me that it wasn't that good, but I've been hearing, like, next, like, I don't know. It it's, keeps only, getting more seasons, so. I've it, only it's seen decent. the first two episodes. Well, they started playing it on AMC as filler, too, during, like, Horror Month and shit, too. Yeah, nope. and the, and the, um and the uh animated stuff's okay it's not great one of the that's it's, really it's, why I it's got like it, low so. budget streaming cut quality let's Sur- be real survivor honest. type yeah. is like one of my favorite short stories from um uh, uh stephen king yeah. uh, it's like based on one of his short stories yeah. and yeah the one where the dude's trapped on the island mm-hmm. and like i always wish that they would have done a um tales from the dark side but they never did yeah and of that one because it would have been difficult but yeah they did in the animation yeah it's not that good or whatever but it's it's, just it's cool streaming finally... quality but it's not unwatchable like i've only seen a few episodes but i tend to watch more before my well, shutter were, the animated ones were specials i think like yeah they were like specials halloween specials and shit yeah, yeah. and uh so that's why i picked they i wanted them and uh, yeah i mean there is some a few short actually there are a few short stories here and there king stories but like basically really what you get is um you get like one season and they might like pull from like one king's short story yeah, and the majority of it and they'll do like and one thing. episode and then the rest of them are like they did i really like the evil dead one they did though the, oh, the crossover yeah, I haven't seen that. um i can't remember what season that's on there's some ones that are like okay you're really you know i see what you're really catering to the 
horror fans out here with right. us. But I appreciate it and stuff. So, um, but yeah, man, uh, did you take part in the um, Shout Factory recent? Did you end any of No, I filled up the cart. I thought you said I, you were going to. I filled up the cart and it was like, it ended, like I had the, I filled up the cart. I think we were recording that night. I was just exhausted. I needed yeah. to go get food. And I was like, I, I, and I was just like, I spent a lot of money and I'm going on vacation. I'm like, I'll just, you know, another time. Cause I, like, I had to dig pretty deep to find shit, like, that I wanted in that fucking you sale. Had most of that. Yeah, I really, had so was... much, dude. So, like, I'm, like, I'm not, I'm not even bragging. I had like eighty percent of the sale. Yeah. You didn't pull the trigger on Fire in the Sky, then that sucks, no. baby. I'll Cause just, a, cause I, like I said, the the extra features aren't that great, but baby, DB Sweeney's actually got an audio interview on here, and I oh. was like, oh, Mister uh, uh, No Man's Land, yeah. he doesn't do anything, and he mm-hmm. does actually do a pretty good. Like, they're all aura audio interviews, and they make, like, this little, like, different scenes from the movie yeah. kind of all together. So you're actually, you're not just, like, staring at black or some yeah. logo or something. They actually had to, like, try to juxtaposition scenes from what they were talking about in their interview. But, yeah, his thing's, like, I think all of them are, like, 30 minutes, maybe yeah. 45 minutes each. No, I, I want to get Fire in the Sky, but it was, like, I was pretty much going to do that giant order and spend over 100 bucks just to get Fire in the Sky, and I'm just like, I'll just pick it up some other time. Well, baby, I guess I'll run through what I got from that sale. Yeah, I got, let's um, go for it. I was trying to fill in the blanks. I got uh, Psycho 2. Mm. I got Psycho 3, mm-hmm. uh, which is a class. Oh, by the way, that's like a class. That's just a sleazy. Fahey it's a classic. Sleazy yeah. class. Did you ever see the Psycho Legacy documentary? Shot no, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, Jeff Fahey on it is like going into detail. Like that's that's a definitive documentary. You need to get it. They never put it out on Blu-ray, but I actually saw on their sale they still had the DVD. Okay. So uh, I recommend you pick it up. I remember getting it when it first came out. But yeah, Jeff Fahey's on there like talking about how sleazy Perkins was and kept telling him to do the lamp scene over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Just keep doing it, baby. Yeah, Dude. baby. And and Jeff's like, uh, there's something weird going. I'm, yeah. No, I think we got it, baby. And he's like, no, I insist. You need to keep doing the lamp scene. I need to see your dick. Some Just more, do baby. it. Just do it some more until I come, and then we can stop right. filming for the day. Pretty much. <laughs> um, I got They Live. Okay. Because uh, yeah. a lot of these fucking movies blue are blue like, or four K view. I just got the I'm I just got the blue man. I okay, just went yeah. full. I just I just got the blue too. For sale. I was feeling nostalgic. This is actually it's right know, next. Maybe to I got the four K. Fuck. I, don't I did know. make a purchase from uh, Amazon because I didn't know they were gonna do the sale. Hmm. I didn't know anything hmm. about the sale, and I right. would have just got it in the sale. But like pretty much the week before, I was feeling nostalgic for the thing, so I did order, and I paid a little <sighs> bit more than I would have. I ordered it through Amazon. Yeah. But uh, I well, I thought I'd throw that in there. I didn't actually get that in the sale, but that is a shout title. Uh, I got Return of the Living. I got Ginger Snaps. Um, I got Return of the Living Dead Part Two. I got the Critters box set. Mm-hmm. Jeez, what else? I know there's more, but I I got this new media shelf and I've been working on everything mm-hmm. on it. Yeah, I mean I got like fourteen. Oh, that's right. I've got three more coming. I've got, uh, oh, wait, go down to David Cronenberg. Okay, so what else did I get in it? I got Dead Ringers. Yeah. And then I made another, I think I placed another, oh, I got uh, Rabid in that sale. I I still need to get Rabid. Yeah, baby. And and it was not cheap. I mean, it wasn't. It was like full price. It was like $19. No, no, it was like $16. Oh, was it? Okay, I thought it was like one of those mm, $18.99 ones. Yeah, usually you can get it on Amazon. Maybe it was. I don't. I thought it was sixteen, but no. Then they extended it out, and that's when I told you last Sunday. And he was like, "You were like, I think the sale's over." And I'm like, "No, baby, they extended it through Sunday." Yeah. And uh, I went and Saturday. I seen that, or maybe it was Sunday earlier before we recorded, and I was like, uh, "I need three more." So I went and got so I could complete my David Cronenberg collection. Mm-hmm. I went and got the Dead Zone. Because okay, like, I like it and everything, but like it's not like I just like that's one of those releases where I'm just like I would rather just buy a studio release than some boutique bullshit. You know what I mean? Like it's not like I don't really care like enough about. And I think the DV, I think the original um, studio release already had like a commentary and a making of. It did. I had the that, very you know, OG DVD yeah. back in the day. Yeah, that was like satisfactory enough. Yeah. 
But so I went back in the sale because it was like sixteen ninety nine or something for it, and I just was yeah. like, this thing's been out for years, yeah. and y'all are trying to get this much for it. It should be like twelve dollars. It's not super old, but I, like I know I got it because I ordered it to get the poster and shit. I know I got it like at least 4K, two years right? ago, huh? Didn't they just put the 4K out here? I don't I know. I don't know because whenever they announce those 4K double dips, I just never pay attention to be honest with you. Oh, they've been doing it quite a bit lately. Yeah, started, like a shitload. Yeah, dead, and now everything's like it's going to be a double dip. They're trying to they're trying to just like. Uh, get as much money you squeeze squeeze the fans for as much as they can but yeah i went back and i ordered that and um two others that are actually waiting at my i, I was really busy on friday and i guess oh no they came in on saturday but i had some thing i was doing with my son yeah we were going to do something so um i didn't end up running over i just figured i'll get it tomorrow actually so i've got um uh, that order, the the third, the little partial three. I got basically I ordered enough to get free shipping. So like yeah. basically three, even in their sale, three Blu-rays is going to cost you fifty bucks. I know. <laughs> it's not much of a sale, but it's just like a lot of the titles that I I grabbed have been sitting in my cart at twenty twenty five dollars. Oh, I got Chainsaw next generation because that thing's always expensive and like for like the for like the past month or two. It, they shot it up to thirty five dollars, and I don't know how they just keep. Yeah, I got that price. years ago on a sale when it was like fifteen well, or baby, something. It must have not have sold well because baby, this one's been out for a while, and it came with a slip cover. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I'll guarantee you that. Didn't, I mean, you, you shit on it. Everybody shit on it. I love that movie. I saw that movie in the theater. No, I never shit on it. I you love don't? the movie too. I no, love it. you all get confused. You're like, you hate that movie, and I'm like, no, baby, it's two that I don't really like. I really don't like two, and I'll and if I if anybody ever heard me shit on a chainsaw movie, it was probably two, and that's why I went and spent money on the turbine release, and I wouldn't buy the damn 4K from VS and anyway because it was expensive and it just isn't. There's... I'm not paying fifty dollars for this fucking movie that I don't really like. I think I got it for uh, sixteen or seventeen uh, on like blow it out of here. Hmm. A there's turbine there's, for, there's only one chainsaw movie I shit on, and that's the fake one, the Netflix one. Fuck that. Well, I'm in. I mean, there's a it, that hasn't come out, and it probably won't. On a but he's got a bootleg, and I'm just like, I feel like it is in the original. Like I, I don't like the remakes. I don't like the prequel. Yeah, I don't the, either. The, the, I, those I won't even own in my collection. I have those, but yeah, like I, I actually like the Netflix. prequel more than I like the remake personally, but. I really don't like the Netflix version, but I'm pretty sure that I gotta have it in the collection because it's technically part of that universe. Like it's part, like it tries to forget all the other sequels, yeah. but it is with the first and like, yeah. I mean, Sally Hardesty but, is not like the same. She's a guilt. Yeah. yeah, she's like dead. But like, I gotta appreciate that because fans have always wondered what the hell happened to her and why she wasn't ever brought. Technically, next generation, she was brought back. She's the girl on the gurney. Do you know her, yeah. sir? But yeah. that was like not, nah, you know, this was That's more... just like a, a fan nod. It wasn't like, oh, we're gonna build this story around this. Yeah. But people shit on it because it was like Laurie Strode in the new yeah. Halloween franchise. Like, oh, we gotta bring this. She's gonna be a badass. We gotta bring her and, back. And legendary and Netflix are sitting there just fucking take with their big giant shovel spoons, fucking putting the slop in there. Yeah, these are fucking good. These fucking morons. They'll they'll like this. I mean, I'll, to be real honest with you, I don't even really personally even hate the movie, like from a minute by minute like standpoint. Like I kinda like the part where they end up in that flooded weird movie theater. But like to me, I can't stand of like this is going to age really well. We got the cell phones in it and the social yeah. media influencers. Yeah. Yeah. The scenes on the bus, like the bus oh, scene God. was probably the best scene. And for me in the whole movie, cause like the, just the slaughter, but then like with the phone shit and stuff, Yeah, they're like, filming yeah. him killing them and they're like, right. get it on film. So he gets, he gets canceled. And it's just like, this is so fucking like bullshit. Like it's, 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 it's ironic. Cause like the best scene is also the worst scene. Like, yeah. It's like, like they ruin it in there you know yeah like if he just walked on the bus and fucking lit that chainsaw up and started sawing and everybody was like trying to crawl and they're like film it film it get it on tiktok i was just like who are the fucking morons who make this shit like 
and like and like also they they think we're fucking morons because they think this is something we would want to like see and enjoy <laughs> yeah but but th- i keep thinking about it and see i've got back into the sickness so now i'm like on the complete <laughs> thing so i'm like man i'm gonna have to buy that that bootleg <laughs> yeah like er, like i'm that i personally have drawn a line out. like i'll see, go I'll- I'll go low, ones. but but streaming sequel ripoffs like Prey, that Predator movie, I don't even fucking want to own that shit. They're like, we're finally putting it out on disc for all you cucks because we're broke now. And it's like, well, I don't even want it. Like, I watched it one time on Hulu and it sucked, and the CGI it's, was it, it's terrible. It's desperation now. I can't. I can't. <sighs> yeah, yeah. You're too fucking desperate. I don't want this garbage. But, uh, yeah, so that pretty much rounds up. Oh, when I was looking, just to get back to my shout uh, select, because I really, that was the most enthusiastic I was about a sale, was that shout yeah. select. And they it was it. really good, because the, the actual, well, not, like, you, you know, were saying that they could have been lower, and you were down in it, and I was like, baby, I'm loving it. Stop. You're killing me, because well, I hate most I'm just of these saying, boutiques, like, from so. personal experience, that their previous sales were much better, much better, price-wise. But, yeah, I, I forgot to mention that I also got summer school in that oh, yeah, like, me I'm too wild and was like grabbing shit that i'm like i need this yeah. and valley obviously i got valley girl and uh cool yeah. world like but yeah summer school and valley girl i was like i need these in my life like yeah. they, these need to be here like so that i can watch them like and brewster's millions i got brought i'm like that's one of probably yeah one of i was on the fence of brewster too. millions but it's, it's a good movie it's, uh my two favorite john candy film like that john candy's in is that and um uh summer rental Oh yeah, it's good. Well, and Summer Rental has not gotten a Blu-ray. I was like, I was like, where's the Blu-ray of that? That's Shout Select. That that would be an ideal title. Summer for Rental always wants to be on Google Play Store in standard definition for four ninety nine. Yeah, to rent. never is. You can yeah. only get you can get the DVD for like five dollars sealed yeah. on eBay. I got it in my cart, and I'm just like, there's a minute I waste my money on this. The, yeah, the show, show it. or some boutique is gonna be like, we got the four K, baby. <laughs> Like, I mean, I know we say that as a joke because that happens to everybody, but you kind of do have to just buy that shitty DVD so you can get the yep. HD version later because it won't happen without it, you know? I don't – well, these are, like, old stocks in the round, though. It's, like, oh, weird. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't – you know, like, I don't even think the studio is making a dime. I think it's somebody was just like, this is the greatest John Candy movie. I'm going to buy cases of these, and then, like, they don't sell, and then, like, now people yeah, are getting them on out. out. Yeah, they got them for like a buck, and they're making like a four dollar. You know, it's a win-win. Yeah. Or they went to Family Dollar or something and bought yeah. like a shit ton of them that were like, "How many cases do you have of these?" Well, we got like ten cases back there. All right, I'll take all of them. I know if it's like even a halfway halfway recognizable movie, it's worth buying the box of of the fifty copies for fucking. Well, it's 30 got bucks. the great poster art where he's yeah. like walking with the cooler on the beach yeah, and shit, and classic. it's like. Yeah, I mean, and it's like, dude, that's probably one of my favorite comedies, too. Like, it's up there. Brewster's Millions is, too. It is, it's ironic that uh, John Candy's in both of them because... Dude, I can't believe they put fucking planes, trains, and automobiles on 4K, and people are like, this transfer is not very good, but it's way better it's than the old good. Blu-ray. It's like, dude, I got the John Hughes box set for fucking whatever it was, 25 bucks for seven films. That Blu-ray is good enough. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like... well, yeah, I mean, when it comes to, like, the comedies and stuff, right. I'm probably, like, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know that I need it on 4K or what, like, yeah. but if, if Summer Rental only came out and it was like 4K Blu-ray, yeah, I'm going to buy it because like, yeah. I love that, you know, I love that film if that's what it takes. That's kind of the whole thing with Martin. I would have bought Martin on Blu-ray a long time ago, Me but nobody, yeah. nobody ever put it out on Blu-ray other yeah. than that Spanish. And it was getting to the point. Thankfully, I didn't pull the trigger on that Spanish, even though I love the artwork. They used it was the, good artwork, yeah. They used that other alternate poster and stuff, uh, which, by the way, that's like a Thai poster, and it comes in that um, uh, Arrow window box DVD. Like, the poster is, like, uh, whatever poster they have. And then, like, because it's a double poster, you flip it over, and it's got that Thai artwork on yeah. it. So, But, yeah, baby, uh, I... Yeah, I mean, I've been, like, loving the sale. Like, even the recent Shout Factory got me kind of excited because I was like, well, I mean, a lot of the stuff I need, like, because, you know, I've talked about it, selling my collection off and stuff. So, like, it really was all, like, the primary stuff that, like, you know, if you're a horror fan, like, take your pick. Like, that was what was in that sale. Like, and if you don't have yeah. it, like, or you need it to fill your collection, um, you know. But, yeah, some of it wasn't really, like, the Chainsaw was, like, that was, like, not 
not much cheaper, but it keeps dry, come, going from like on Amazon, 25 to 35. And I think it was like $20 or something. And I'm like, okay, this is like the lowest I think I've ever seen it anywhere. Maybe it was like 19 whatever. Yeah, pe- people who think Amazon always has the lowest price or they just automatically are. Like, I always, like, wonder where that thing came from because, like, Amazon's very weird. Like, you can you can go in and, like, the same day and, like, you just don't finish buying something. You go back, oh, I forgot about this this night. Like, four hours later, you go in and it's 10 bucks more all of a sudden. Like, their weird dynamic pricing based on what they got in their warehouses is fucking bunk. Well, I've seen literally titles throughout the day and it, it'll say, this title's gone down like 30 cents, 20 cents. Yeah. And I'm like, and then a dollar. And I'm like, that was what I kept waiting on the damn crash, which I did end up getting. The uh, Criterion had a flash sale. And then you were like, I'm pretty happy with the Blu ray. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, well, Amazon never advertises that Blu ray. They only want you to buy this region. You know, well, it doesn't yeah. matter because it's one disc, but the arrow. Yeah. It is. It's supposed to be just for the UK. And at one point it was $27. And then it shot back up. And then one day I was watching it go down and I'm like, well, basically, I'm not going to buy it for, like, more than $27, so what am I going to wait? And then the Criterion Flash sale, and I'm like, okay, uh, I need Crumb. Yeah. I don't know if you're a fan of that documentary. Yeah, it's but really I was good. Like, I saw I, it in the theater. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I was like, I've been needing Crumb, and I was like, there, it's there. And then um, I like uh, Ride in the World, like the early Jack Nicholson westerns, the, mm-hmm. the acid westerns he did, and they have a double feature. I'm like, I need that. And uh, I was like, fuck it, I need Crash to complete... I'm, I almost have a complete, not, com- people are like, oh, do you got Memphis? Yeah, no, and Spider, fuck that shit, you yeah, know, spider I'm not of that stuff. And, did, you, uh, did you say you won't buy M. Butterfly, or what? I mean, I don't think I've only seen part, I can't remember. Because I got a, I haven't watched it yet, but I got a real cheap I, on that shelf sale, like twelve ninety nine. I've never even seen it back in the day, like, and, um, yeah, I it was very think, obscure. And the other thing is, is, like, he's, like, he's so close to, uh, to, like, I've said this on EC that, like, I don't know why, other than that, like, I don't know, they're just, eat, maybe they got, too, maybe they'll have too big of egos, but, like, it always seemed to me that um, David Lynch and David Cronenberg were, like, on the same, like, weird wavelength, and, like, way. and I always get um, Elephant Man confused, like, I'm always like, yeah. did David Cronenberg or David Lynch do that film, because yeah, it seems Lynch. like a weird movie, but it is David, I always go, yeah. no, Lynch did that one, Um but it seems like a movie. The Elephant Man is the one movie that, like, it didn't. It it would probably be the same fucking movie. It doesn't matter who was, yeah, you know, directed same. that one. You, you know, you like, know how you got to remember that in your brain, bat. You just got to remember that Cronenberg wasn't on the A list yet when Elephant Man came out. He still well, was doing B movies. Yeah, he was. He was pretty. I. I mean, what Videodrome was out when Elephant Man came out? Was it? I think it came out the like. I could be wrong about this, but I want to say Elephant Man was 82 and Video Drum was 83. I could be wrong. I actually could be wrong about yeah, that. Yeah, we'll have to look that but up. But I thought they were like a year apart. Because I remember like I was super young, like super, super young watching Elephant Man on TV. It was when it was But I don't cable consistently movie. like as many. I like, I appreciate David Lynch as a filmmaker and stuff, but yeah. I don't consistently like as much of his work as like, I'm sitting here looking and I'm like, okay, I got the fly. I've got, you know, Shivers, I got Rabbit, I got, you know, these are the movies, like, pretty much anything that's, like, weird science fiction, and, like, always kind of, like, until, like, recently, um, Crash was always kind of, like, I was, like, this movie's a little too weird, like, it's a little out there, but, like, when we were doing that, um, uh, retrospective with, uh, Strebo, yeah, really appreciate that last uh i was like man i want to see this and like i would like to see this in 4k like this is a beautiful film like there's something like it's definitely not like one that you can just throw in and be like yeah i'm gonna watch fucking you know i'm gonna watch the like it's not like naked like i've watched naked lunch probably a hundred times it's not one of those movies yeah you just i still need to watch it i skimmed it that criterion blue by the way bb uh <laughs> lynch made it to the a-list way before cronenberg elephant man was 1980 and video drone was 1983 so there's the three-year difference yeah, yeah. Oh, i don't even know if video drone put him but it's definitely i mean you know took him up there you know i mean sure. video, well video drone i mean i think i think you gotta say there's only so many um studio movies made a year and video drone was a universal pictures release you know what i mean like, yeah yeah, I would say he was on the A list when he did Video Drone. Well, that's the only one I can really think back to and cite that I'm like, okay, you're definitely. I mean, Scanners was a little bit bigger, but um, 
Uh, and he's always been, I think the difference though was why he wasn't like bigger sooner was because he's like working up in Canada at the time. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, he just had it. It was really the, the box office. It wasn't even like, Oh, he made a great film with scanners. It was like, no, the box office was good enough that they noticed them on right. the scanners, you know? Yeah. Scanners was like, yeah. And, and so as far as I'm concerned, scanners was a big film to me, but like, I know yeah. that Videodrome wasn't, you know, but um, I don't I don't hear a lot of people. I think that Elephant Man is in is a cult title because I don't think a lot of I know it's a bigger budget film, but well, I know, still think you know what's weird though, BB. Anybody can get in like and feel and be like, oh, this is a good movie. Like, you know what's no. weird though? It was a mainstream movie when it came out because it was nominated for Academy Awards and shit. So it was like mainstream at the time, but because it was one of the. Biopic. I mean, that's yeah. you know, it's it's like a biopic. I get I get it, but like. I've never heard, like, I don't know, amongst everyone else. I think this is the first time I've ever brought up Elephant Man amongst yeah, other I film mean, friends. It was a I huge guess. film at the time. It's just not a movie that cult people get into. They don't want they don't want to sit down on a Saturday night with their friends, drink beer, and watch Elephant but it is Man. A cult film. Yeah. It is a cult film now. You know? I mean, it's an, I would say it's more of a niche film than a cult film, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, like, as far as Corona, I need to get more Lynch, like, uh, Mulholland Drive is, like, that criterion, like, yeah. I didn't see it in the sale, because it said in stock titles, and I'm like, Mulholland Drive needs to be on this order, and I'm like, well, it's not there, but I have it on my, in my Amazon cart, like. When everybody was jerking their gherkin, talking about, oh, one day, 2021, maybe, oh, maybe, maybe we can, we can put out Lost Highway and Mulholland Drive. I just got the German box because German's all about David Lynch. I just got the German box set like five or six years ago. It was like twenty eight bucks. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, great well, transfers. Well, it came out on four K. It's it's out on four K and everything. Is you had a four K box set or is just a regular? It's Blu Ray. Yeah, I mean, it was like when I got it, like when four K was just first coming out. You know what I mean? yeah see like and i'm not a huge by the way i'm not a huge i think eraser head is like way overrated like right. i don't i saw it back when i was a teenager when i would have been like interested and i'm just like this is weird for the sake of being weird and that's not to say everything yeah. he is an artist i just i mean it, get... has, it has a story you can follow but it clearly is a, a yeah, student it, film it's just it's a student film a yeah it's like watching honestly and I think like looking at his student stuff and like they're very similar in Cronenberg's uh, student stuff, but like Cronenberg, it, you watch his student stuff and it's like this guy's trying to be like fucking you know uh, exploitation big, big director. Yeah. yeah, he's trying to be a big leagues rate. Like even his short early student films, he's like he, like I'm like, what do you think? Like you think you're Bergman already, baby? You yeah. ain't. You can't have this much dialogue. Going he was on, jumping but. straight to the top, baby. Yeah, he's like, oh, I've got the scene. It's gonna be dialogue driven, and it's like, yeah, but this isn't got like a listers like where I give a fuck. I'm like, I don't know who this Joe Blow is from fucking Ontario. <laughs> like, and then some of them would pop up in his later movies, and like the one guy, he's like um, the balding dude. He's in yeah. Scanners, and he's he pops up. He's even in Existence. He plays one of the NPC characters. He's in The Brood. He's in Rabbit. <laughs> um yeah he's fucking great and uh he i think he was in his early stuff too as well he's like a bit canadian player but i always look forward i think he passed away but i i'm like yeah, i wish he, he was did. in uh i don't know if he passed away before he did um crimes of the future but i was like looking forward to seeing his cameo yeah. in crimes but uh, i haven't seen him in a in quite a while i don't think he was even in um history of violence or uh eastern promises or anything like that so yeah i thought well i mean history of promise is a little different though because they're yeah. trying to play the russians and shit but i i, I was i mean i guess it was kind of like what i expected and maybe that's why i liked it but i was shocked that i i felt like i was a little higher on uh crimes of the future than you were baby oh yeah well that's because um i don't you know i would just i i I like it, and I I reviewed it. I'm gonna have it on in the on next issue of Sleaze Fiend, but I think I just like it, and you haven't watched it yet. I don't believe uh, and I like Infinity Pool. Infinity Pool. By yeah, son. I still haven't seen Infinity Pool. A lot. I thought his son's Infinity Pool, who Neon Neon put both these films out. Neon, like I'm looking forward to David's new film that he's gonna. I think he's gonna be putting that out. I think that's his new company, is Neon, and his mm -hmm. his son. Brandon is doing uh, stuff through Neon, and I like Neon. I feel I like know, Neon seen... is like the I've legit A24. I feel like A24 went commercial, and Neon is yes. like resetting yeah. back to the original A24. Yeah, they're definitely. And then, like, it's just we. It's the same thing, like Blumhouse. 
was like had promise and then they sold out yeah. and then like A24 became the new Blumhouse yeah. and now they've sold out and so Neon just give them a time after cuz you know you know David Cronenberg's going to want to win an Academy Award or get a nomination yeah. he's been in the big leagues and yeah. stuff if he can do something that's worthy but yeah Crimes of the Future was that like his 90s output was that on the level of like existence or crash fuck no like, yeah, and he yeah. even said he did it on a lower budget. I mean, it could yeah. have been, but I just don't think overall. I thought it was really good, personally. Like, I don't know if, like, I mean, I, those are all, like, different. I mean, I thought Map to the Stars was awesome, and that was just, like, a. a... I watched the first 15 minutes of it, and I was interested. So, yeah. I, at some point, I need to track down a copy of it. I would like to. But, um, what's the one with, um, uh, the one where dude's traveling around in the van. Cosmopolis, like, yeah. Cosmopolis. Yeah. Like, I had that one own, didn't do I... it too much for me, to be honest. But The the, the, the plot was like, oh, it's going to be futuristic sci-fi. And I'm like, all right, he's back to his sci-fi roots. Yeah. And then and, and the him, like, old, old, old boy's getting blowjobs in the back of the limo. That's all the movie is. You're in the, you, it, like, you get a little glimpses that there's technology, but like, and he did uh, Crimes of the Future on real low budget too. I mean, yeah. uh, baby, I got the I got the Blu-ray sitting here. I picked it up from Walmart as soon as it came out. It's got the slip on it. Um, Which one? Crimes of the Future. Oh, okay, okay, cool. You're. Yeah, I, I just, just remember just like. I mean, video. I still never <laughs> bought it, but like I just remember you being kind of like. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, uh, what did you watch? What did you watch it on streamy? <laughs> no, I rented the Blu-ray from Netflix back when that used to exist. Oh, you should have rented it around the end, baby. You could have got your copy for free. Then I could have, yeah. Instead, I got a copy of Hard Bodies 2 on DVD for free. Oh, that's great. I see that's on Tubi right now. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the original Hard Bodies. The Hard Bodies 2 is kind of like a fake sequel and name and only. Hard Bodies 2 are both on uh, Tubi right now, yeah. along with just one of the guys, which I oh, la- I love that movie. I, I watched last night, and... Uh, and I had a good laugh. I still, I've got it sitting in my Amazon cart, but if they want like 22 bucks and it's pretty bare bones. Yeah, it's super bare bones. I watched it on TV last night. It's always been a favorite, com, you know, of a comedy. It's one of my uh, favorites from, as a kid. And then it's got uh, Sherilyn Fenn. Yep. In it. Prime Sherilyn Fenn as well. All right, baby, we're over the, we're about two hours, 15 minutes into our uh, movie hoarders. I mean, like, obviously I'm not going to cover anything else. I got boxes and boxes. Do you want to just save shit for next time? Because uh, I'm sure we're going to be doing this in a couple hour, a couple more weeks. But if you, if you want to do some more. Well, baby, I'm stepping out on the back porch, so I'm away from it. But I should comment on one release that I bought that I spent so much money on that I had to pay a scalper because I heat and hot. See, this is one of yeah, the. Yeah, finish it's, strong. It's, it's funny because you heat and hawed and you didn't really get burned too bad on your second sight release of Martin, standard edition. But I heat and hawed and ended up buying the Dark Sky of Czech Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I passed initially through the pre order on Diabolic for the second sight special edition. Then I started seeing people do reviews and started seeing that book, how thick it was that came in that release. And then it had like, because I've been seeing. I've seen over the years these behind-the-scenes photographs Mm -hmm. of Chainsaw and stuff, and uh, I guess that's got a bunch of those in there, and, yeah, I just got mesmerized by it. So, baby, I had to to pay a scalper $70 more than I could have got it for the pre-order. And you know that motherfucker you paid? You know he was like... I'm gonna I'm gonna pay so much electricity bill with this fucking second sight well, TCM. Let's hope so. And and you know what? Like a month or so ago, I could have got it sealed, but I heat and hawed then too for eighty bucks. <laughs> By the I way, I don't hot. think the expression is heat and hawed. I think it's hemmed and hawed. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you fuck, you fuck, well, whatever. You fucked around, didn't you? And you had to With pay thirty five dollars, and you could have just paid like thirty three forty nine, sir. Come on, let's get real. Is that shipped? Well, it was in a bundle, but that's the that's where the price jumped down to when I added the other movies. Well, I think you could have done worse. That's I, sure. I mean, it was free shipping, so that wasn't a problem. You know, they charged tax. I don't know. The tax was probably like another two dollars or something. So oh, it probably so, was like thirty five something. Because you hit a certain price price bracket with your order. It, it wasn't a price bracket. It was like uh, buy two or more or buy three or more or something. And then, then it knocked like 15% off. You know what I mean? 
But I mean, I mean, I don't really. I mean, like, like you're like, oh, you, you heat and hot and didn't just cave in immediately to Diabolic DVD. I just like, I was all about pre-ordering it and excitement. They're like, oh, we won't ship to the U.S. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll, I'll wait it out. Second sight directly. Yeah, I, I mean, I would have yeah. pre-ordered. I would pay full price. I'll be honest with you. If I could have pre-ordered it from Second Sight. I would have went full in with the deluxe. It wasn't even about saving the money, but it's like it was. And I'm not mad about it. I'm glad the movie came out. I'm glad I got a standard edition. It's fine. I like, you know, I, I can stop relying on my old ass Lionsgate crop DVD, whatever that everybody hates. But um, I mean, my thing is like, you know, once something the the deal gets queered like that, like I'm just like, okay, I'll just do it at my own leisure. And I was trying to put a deal together with uh, Blow It Out of Here. He was doing a similar deal, like get get two get three but he just didn't yep. have any other movies and then by the time i like i still never found any other movies of his, and then he sold out of his copy so i'm like well let me hit up valhalla valhalla was down to their last copy and i'm they like got oh. plenty of imports they that, mm. they specialize in imports. yeah so <laughs> that's where i found the other one i was just like i mean maybe i i whatever five bucks whatever but it's like at the same time it's like i you know whatever it just it just uh, didn't go to diabolic dvd i mean that's okay we don't have to buy everything from diabolic DVD. i mean it all worked out i, did, I, got I mean i didn't get scalp i didn't pay 130 dollars for fucking tcm it was 125 so <laughs> okay it was outrageous and it's the most expensive i've ever paid yeah. for release and i when i got it and now i'm like i can't even open this thing because and there's really, and then really, it's sitting sealed on the shelf because I'm like, I'm gonna, I've spent so much that I literally you will can't be enjoy done. it now, yeah. And it's like, dude, I mean, you shouldn't spend that much money on something. Like, I could open it, and I might eventually, but I have the Dark Sky release. Like, well, you wanted it for the book, though. The book is what got you hard for it, but now you can't even, yeah. like, flip through the book, right? Well, there's and there's extras, but I think they're on a Blu-ray that's region-locked. So, yeah. you know, now, now I'm getting into... Well, I got All right, that's what I mean. You're, you're raking me over the coals for he and right. hawing over fucking Martin. And it's like, what, I'm out five bucks, and I'm, I'm enjoying the thing. You, you're paying through the nose and you can't even put fingerprints on it bb i might open it eventually we'll see let's you see better. If it, if, you better you better you better i'll be watching ebay and i'll see it oh no now it's now it's going for like 200 baby i definitely can't even like look at it anymore my eye my vision will burn holes in the this plastic. is this is what i'm going to do this, this is the offer i'm going to make you is when it, when the Powerball money comes in. By the way, the lightsabers are back, so we, should, we need to wrap up soon because the lightsabers are back and they're in full force. But um, when the Powerball money runs in, rolls in, I'm going to send you a PayPal for however much you paid for that scalp copy. So that way it will be like your copy will be for free. And then I want you to take a video of yourself taking the shrink wrap off and enjoying that book. I just want to see you happy from it. I just, you know what I mean? Like I don't, the whole thing of like, I mean, I've paid scout prices on a couple little things, like not really scout prices, but I played a premium, like, you know, like the Vestrons and shit, but I ain't keeping those sealed, BB. They're, they're coming out. They're getting watched. You know, I get to enjoy them. They, they might be a little bang, more banged up than I would like or whatever, but, right. you know, they're in the collection. They're going to get watched. You know, I just, the story you just told about that TCM sitting sealed and like you have the anxiety over like, this is basically a hundred $25 piece of shrink wrap because as soon as I take this off like I, I have zero investment left in this it's worthless well, you know no. I mean it's probably I, I see them still going for like a hundred bucks even cracked so crack. okay that's not that 25 bad bucks on that so it really only $25 I'll just PayPal you the $25 <laughs> <laughs> listen to you you get cheap I don't even have to wait for the Powerball I got $25 right now well, well my whole justification by picking it up is like I am like I'm not trying to be like a a a downer on the media but like no it's a 16 millimeter film yeah. it's in 4k like pretty much like if they try to do any higher you know resolutions like i just think that it's the end for these releases so basically it's the ultimate it's the ultimate tcm um release and not to mention baby like uh i saw a couple of the little halloween stores were selling yeah. full size animatronic uh chainsaw leather face standees and I actually considered buying one. It was like three hundred dollars. Oh Thankfully, I didn't because I want. I you might as make... well. That's only the price of two Blu-rays are there. Like... Right, two of those. Right, yeah. baby. Because like my whole thing is, um, eventually when I get into my own spot, I want to have like a yeah. little uh, chainsaw. Corner. Yeah. 
little corner and I was like, yeah, I need to have the mannequin. But then I uh, seen that uh, trick or treat studios has like some masks and stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah I could just buy one of those for 50 bucks. And that would yeah. just be good enough. For a little... Did the mask on the mannequin thing, the, the animatronic it's figure, rot, did, too, did it I look mean, good or yeah, it's going to rot. Yeah, the one, well, the one, one Halloween store had like um, the classic, you know, but this mm-hmm. one, the, and they sold out or whatever and they were going for more and you should see what they're going for on eBay now. But I really like the the other ch- Halloween store had one with the the um, kill mask for the ending, yeah. and I was like, ah, that that's you know I love that whole get up already a little bit more. And I was thinking about pulling the trigger on it. I was gonna do like the installment payment on it, mm-hmm. but like I'm seeing fans like on these groups with their Michael Myers Halloween mask that they've had, yeah. and they're all like falling apart and yeah, shit. They look like and, shit. Dude, this thing is not gonna last the test of no, time. No, it's not gonna last ten years, baby. Not even. I don't even care about it making the sounds or whatever. I just wanted yeah. to have Leatherface over there with all the other stuff, you know, sitting there. But I'm just like, yeah, this mask is gonna fall apart. I mean, I just. Uh... You'd be better so, off tracking down like a chainsaw that looks like the one from the movie and getting a mask, and that way, like for the display, like you could just swap the mask out every every few years once they start dry rotting. You know what I mean? yeah well i mean trick-or-treat studios is their uh kill mask i was thinking about getting that one too and it, it's it's higher quality than what's on the what's yeah. on the, the dummy it's yeah it's decent it's decent but the, you know so i'd probably end up changing out mask but yeah i mean whatever i'm not going all out but i do have um a bunch of uh, 35 millimeter still stills of the ending and I want to get a light box put together here. And, of course, I showed you that Mondo poster. Yeah, I think with recently. the light box, with that, oh, well, yeah, that's going to be better than anything else. And then else. I've got the uh, French uh, little smaller mini poster, too, as well. I acquired here a while back. I think I showed you that. And, uh, of course, I've got the book, the astrology book that Pam was reading in the van. Mm-hmm. Uh, the same edition, too, as well, I found used on uh, on eBay. It looks about in the same shape as the one. Uh, she had and i mean yeah. i've got pretty much like it's all very, the releases yeah screen accurate i would say with that book um yeah so i mean you know whatever but yeah my whole reasoning with this release is i'm like yeah this is pretty much the end i think yeah. and i think it'll just go up and up and, and i could just watch the uh, dark sky release i cracked it it looks great um it actually has like more grain it actually looks a little less cleaned up than the blu-ray maybe they went back mm-hmm. and they were like Maybe they did a few things where they put some stuff. Because I'm, I'm seeing, like, lines from it running through the projector or something. I don't yeah. know. You know, I'm seeing Depends like, on lines. Depends on the print, I guess, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember what – I don't remember seeing that stuff on the Blu-ray. So maybe people were complaining and saying, it doesn't look rough enough. Let me just say, anybody out there that's like, oh, I just grabbed it back. It's this is like, like the, shit. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, sort of, you know, obviously people want like cigarette burns and like, I get but why that. do you want a 4k like, that looks like shit? Like I get a DVD looks like shit and you like the way that looks like stick with that. Like maybe even an early Blu-ray, but like once you start doing remasters and you're marketing, like this is the remastered, whatever, 4k, whatever. Why, why would you go in as a fan? Like say you love the shitty looking TCM. You just love it to look like it did it in drive and whatever. That's your, that's your preference. But like. Why would you? Why would you think they're going to make a 4K, which is a format that's made for the highest quality to look like shit? Like, why would they do that? Well, it does have some, uh, you know, things that elements in there and stuff from age and everything that they left into the dark sky. I don't know if the second sight version has that or not, but yeah. you know, I haven't cracked it, obviously. But uh, no, my whole thing, like I said, is you know, I, I I think this is the end of the road for the 16 millimeter film. And I'm impressed that they were able to take it to 4K. Like uh, Last House on the Left, I don't think could ever. I, I they'll probably try just to squeeze money out of people, but I don't recommend anybody go any past any any further past 2K. Well, I mean, honestly, a lot of people have a problem telling the difference between 4K and 2K. So like, it, all we can do is jump to 8K now, and it's like 35 millimeter film prints are roughly about five thousand lines of resolution so like... uh, i was reading a thing about how they're they can actually go up to 16k that's that'll be like the max on them and like anything past 16k that isn't 35 that isn't 35 millimeter has to be like a modern film that's shot in that format some shit yeah which so like 
I mean, that's going to be the end of the road for us. Like, basically, it's like, okay, uh, what are we buying? Like, Ant-Man on 16K? Okay, that yeah. can handle it, maybe. Well, no, know, that, that there's was... no way you can get 16K movie on a disc. I mean, you'll have to... Yeah, it will take them 20 okay. more years to it'll come up with a compression that can fit it onto a disc. It, you know? It'll probably be on, like, a on a, on a on like a thumb drive or something, I think, because they're getting bigger thumb... I mean, there's terabyte... Yeah. thumb drive so like basically that's like the future you know that's the other thing to think about on physical format but is it, like it's like it's like every time you jump though bat no matter what the the the, the container is the disc the thumb drive whatever you want to go to it's like they 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 lost such a big chunk of people going from dvd to blu-ray and they lost an even bigger chunk going from blu-ray to 4k like i know 4k is growing but it's just also because 4k is still like a really niche format even eight years seven years after it fucking launched and it's just yeah, like it's really the laser disc of yeah. this era I it really is don't think. it is like i don't like, think everybody's buying into it like you know? You, you know what it is is dvd still is the vhs of this era blu-ray is the beta of this era and fucking 4k is the laser disc of this era or cd or CD. Yeah. Well, CD was a little bit higher. It wasn't quite laser disc. I think yeah. a CD was a little bit better than VHS. But uh, pretty much, uh, from what I understand, Beta and VHS were like the same quality. Yeah, I mean, roughly. I, I think VHS just everybody claimed Beta was higher quality, but VHS just always looked shitty because everybody wanted to try to put eight hours of shit on a tape, but. Well, well, beta was great because it was a smaller tape, and so it didn't yeah. wear out as easily So because yeah. it didn't have to turn as far. Yeah. So uh, it was better for um, archiving, I guess, and if you were taping shit off TV. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's why VHS won. I know everybody said, oh, it's because of porn, but I think VHS won because you could record longer from TV or some bullshit. But if, but, but if you cared about it, like... Because I remember when DVD came out, people said, well, that will never fly because you can't record on it. I mean, I know technically there was DVD recorders, but they weren't really mass yeah. selling them. But like, people are like, well, you can't record on it. What, what? But it's like, but then, the have, DV, but then the DVR have, came and solved that problem, so it didn't matter. You know what I mean? That's all you did was you stuck a DVDR disc into those yeah. recorder ones, and then you yeah. could record your TV shows on. But, like, but it never like, went okay, mainstream, though. Doesn't it's only as good as the feed that's sending, too. So, yeah. you know, when those came out, not every channel was like, even sending Digital. i mean some of the movies yeah. might not have even been converted over to standard definition they might have been like a little bit better than a vhs rip but, you know. yeah because they hadn't been they hadn't even been remastered or anything yeah. and like t you know tv channels were still showing whatever they could get their hands on so yeah but uh yeah baby i mean yeah, yeah. i mean i got a shit ton i'm sure you had a shit ton more i mean oh, that's way what more the show gets out of it gets yeah. out of hand especially the when you get in this grows because baby the really the sickness here though is baby you got stuff from like last year still sitting sealed i mean it, not really it, sealed i actually go through and break yeah. the seal but yeah but you haven't even watched it you might as well keep it sealed in case like you feel like maybe you'll wake up one morning and do what i did and be like fuck this life i'm gonna go i want to go on vacation <laughs> I'm I mean, sell all the shit off. This is the way I feel about cracking and sealed, and then we'll wrap up because I gotta release about a gallon of urine, and then I gotta get something to eat. I hardly ate anything today, but We're this is what I feel. Good. It's like it's like sealed versus unsealed of a common movie really doesn't increase the value. If something's out of print and it's rare, just like you said with TCM, it's still going for a hundred bucks cracked. Like if it's rare, like you're still and you crack it, it's still going to sell for more than what you paid for it. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Unless you bought it, unless you bought it like I did, fucking yeah, after the unless fact. you scout. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I don't really get scouts, so. But yeah, so I want to thank the listeners for staying with us through this madness. I'm kind of running out of energy here, but don't worry, I will be all gassed up for the uh well probably probably next one will be the post black friday hangover which i don't even know if there's gonna be black friday movie sales this year they kind of been dwindling the last few years other than boutique yeah, spy yeah. has announced that they're going yeah. to uh out their physical media well not even really announced i think they got leaked and they haven't really like you know but either way but a they're, lot, of, they're a lot of people saying the stores are like now i went last around uh christmas last year uh shopping personally for me i was doing christmas shopping for everyone else but when it comes to media, like nobody gives a fuck. Nobody that I buy for gives a fuck about physical media no. except me. So 
I went into Best Buy, and uh, that's where I got that Halloween Kills uh, exclusive yeah. Best Buy steel book. That and, and you were like, "That's weird," and I'm like, "Yeah, because this region people don't give a fuck about, so it's still hanging around." And yeah. I knew right away. I was like, "Yeah, that one's going for quite a bit. Like, I could make a profit off that if I, you know, wanted to sell it for fifty bucks. You know, I'm grabbing that." You should so. if it was selling, because I bet it's probably worthless now after. The, the the crying that's still going on to this day about Halloween ends, it ruined that trilogy for most of the fans. But everybody see people shit on kills, but then they were like, and then they saw ends, and then they were like, oh, well, kills isn't so bad. And I'm like, yeah, it was a de- it's a decent film, actually. You don't I mean, have to compare them. Like, me, it's, it's decent. It's yeah. watchable. I mean, I think you make a trilogy of worn-out-ass Michael Meyer movies. I think they all should be different from each other, honestly. But if I had to rank that trilogy, I'm probably going Kills, then Ends, then Halloween 2018. Halloween I think that 2018. Such an obsession for uh, yeah. Part Three that they might actually like if they reboot it, they might yeah. try to like do something like that where they do shit with the uh, the masks and stuff like that. Yeah. I think I think that's the only direction you could actually viably go, and you could still have Michael Myers zested in there. Too as well. I think they should know. just do it where he's the fourth mask, personally. Some kind of exploitation type, yeah. you know, is really would be your best bet right now to go yeah. if you're going to go. It has to be completely different than what you've been doing. Make it but cheap, no no recognizable actors, and just make it you know fun. People 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 want fucking. They don't. They'll keep paying just because Michael Myers is in it. Well, they'll pay to bitch too. They'll they'll yeah. pay to see it, and then they'll bitch, and then they'll complain about it more, and then they'll buy the Blu-ray. <laughs> but that's a good thing for the studios yeah. out here, really, isn't it? I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, they're like, okay, you can shit on it as long as you bought it. Like, yeah, we don't shit care. on it all you want, but you got your right. copy, right? Make okay, sure you buy it. Yeah. yeah. All right, BB. Thanks for joining me for this one, and we'll be back. And we we roughly did two and a half hours. I think we're gonna go four hours next time. Well, I'm glad we kept it down, and yeah. we did get a get get a bunch of stuff on there. And yeah. Uh, yeah, we talked a bunch of horror and stuff though too. But you said this is gonna be going up. We're in the October season, not to like pull the curtain back too much, but uh, you said this is gonna go up and. In November, well, though. probably November, because the more you talk about horror in October, the more people avoid it on podcasts. I've noticed. So, like, I've committed yeah. suicide most Octobers by covering horror strictly. We did talk season. a bunch of horror, so it was good. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. I think the Halloween Hangover, which I which I uh, patented during my time as the bootleg host of EC when I did the <laughs> Halloween, right. yeah, the Halloween Hangover. I think that's more profitable for downloads than the actual Halloween time. Absolutely, yeah. Vroom, vroom. Luke, I am your father. Vroom, vroom. All right. <laughs> we're we're going to cut this off before Bat gets decapitated with uh, Soka Tassanos or fucking whatever name it is. Lightsaber. The Mandalorian over here. I don't know, baby. I don't follow that shit. You yeah. know, I don't, I don't you just know. make the lightsabers. You don't watch them. <laughs> I like Solo, man. And I'm Solo's making a lot good. of black for that, but I love Solo. I love Solo. Like, I love I feel- Solo. Yeah, we both do. So that's classic. So people yeah. are like, "All right, we're shutting it off now." We d- yeah. we hated Solo, so we're shutting it off. All right, so that's it for Movie Hoarders Two. Join us in a couple weeks for Movie Hoarders Two Point Five. We'll be back with a vengeance. Okay, BBs later. These fucking lightsabers are blowing my eardrums out. It's the new Star Wars lightsaber from Kenner. Inflation required, batteries not included. You can pretend you have powers when you switch on Kenner's Star Wars lightsaber. Ready to feel the force? Yeah! Switch on your Star Wars lightsabers, close your eyes, and go! I got it! Me too! Zach, you passed the test! The force is with you! The Star Wars lightsaber, new from Kenner. Balloons not included.